Right. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rucha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, laboring the truth and sincerity, pushing the word to the four corners of the earth. So uh, the first scripture, just want to just bring it out. Um, Isaiah 26 and 20. Because there's a lot of talks right now about, you know, little nitpicky things. Uh, a lot of questions come up on how you interpret the, uh, interpret the law. And there's even questions about genealogies, which, you know, Paul, sp uh, Paul spoke against. Uh, that would just really, that's the vain topic, right? We don't, again, we, we mentioned many times, we don't know we're Israelites. Okay, we don't have genealogies to prove it. But yeah, we, we sound bite that. Yeah, of course, please sound bite. Please do it many times and make review videos because we don't know. We go by faith. All right, but the main thing we you should be focusing on is salvation and the end of Esau Edom's kingdom. All right, it's Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Okay, now what that's talking about is the, is the chariot delivering us. Okay. And that's 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 what it means regarding shutting thy doors, okay? Because not everybody's gonna make up in, uh, into the clouds, and those clouds that it's referring to, uh, well, in scripture, is actually the the chariots, you know, in uh, uh, Psalm one one o four, and verse three. I'll just quickly get it. Psalm chapter one hundred and four, and verse three. It says. He layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, and right. walketh upon the wings of the wind. Okay, and that's um. That's the scripture saying that the, the most high make it the clouds his chariot. So the clouds that we're gonna that's gonna be taking us up, uh, they're gonna be taking us up from the nuclear missiles. That's why at the end of uh, the latter end of Isaiah 26 and 20, it says to the in, uh, indignation be past. Lord willing it be. Lord willing it. Revelation chapter 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, among. Right. And again, the indignation that's coming. It's not it's not light work you know it's not something that that's just gonna go you know you know just a little judgment it's a slap in a stick because you know Esau Edom they're used to that you know they used to just <laughs> you're going in timeout now Jimmy all right just look over there ten nine eight <laughs> something stupid like that that's not what's coming for Edom this time right when you how I come there's gonna be genuine violence and again Lord willing with that number quite frankly because I I want revenge, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, all, we're all catching hell, us as a nation of uh, Yasharala, specifically the elect know it for sure, they have it in their hearts, they know what's going on. We're catching hell having uh, our enemies rule over us and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's building up, our anger is building up. This is the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Perfect. Seeing is a righteous thing with Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us. And when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Therefore also we pray always for you that our power would count you worthy of this, of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our power and the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. I've got Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, and at that time shall Michael, Maya Ka'ala, Meaning, who is like power? Who is like who is like the Most High? And at that time, Shemaiah Ka'ala stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. So yeah, time is going to be a time of a great violence. In fact, all that could all verse two as well, just to get into that. So time of Jacob's trouble that's what it's going into it's something that we've never really uh, never really seen before and anybody who's breaking it down not talking that uh, saying that's 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 already happened that's ridiculous all right because uh, Yahweh Shai he prophesied that you know that um he, he prophesied the days of Noah coming again as well you know the time of, of great wickedness and that around that time period of us going to captivity and everything 
that wasn't the time of, of, of you know, where, it, you know, there wasn't really what we have to expect for the wicked, you know, the, um, the thermonuclear missiles, okay, which are going to be sent. You know, there's going to be many deaths, sedition among men, and uproar, which you see starting up, but it's not the florid, like this full rotation of the whole, um, what's the terminology? That flourishing, sorry. Yeah, flourishing, I'm sorry. Flourishing, thank you, the water brother. That, that, you know, of the, of the prophecy, because you're not seeing it in such a vast amount. And in Daniel 12 and 2, give me that real quick, because the people that don't get it, th those of our people that don't obey the gospel, and don't actually uh, repent for um, and turn away from Esau Edom and his, uh, his imaginations, they're going to have shame and everlasting contempt. Bring it up with Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. Exactly. And those aren't, and uh, the, the ones that sleep in the dust of the earth, there's going to be some who, who were written in that book of life, which are of the elect of Israel, and some that weren't, because they're not going to, they're not, they're not set up on this earth to actually receive it at the end. They're not predestinated for salvation. Go ahead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Right. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, always remember that they were the ones that was going off they're going to be in the kingdom you know they're going to be born that's already going to give a spark into them okay so i was born in this in the kingdom of heaven i wasn't already here wait so i'm learning about oh man i was the damn i was a scoffer man i was the guy who, who used to hate on, on on those brothers who used to teach the truth i was the one who you know i trusted in what esau eden put out. i used to love my own enemies the ones that never looked out for me i used to cleave to them that's going to bring so much con that's going to bring a hey, everlasting contempt everlasting contempt of who they were man and that shame will cover them you know but nevertheless you know the they're, they're still gonna enjoy the kingdom you can't <laughs> you can't not enjoy the kingdom of heaven can you really you got scripture go jeremiah chapter 13 verse 7 alas for that day is great so that none is like it there is even a time of jacob's, jacob's trouble, trouble and none like it right go ahead so he shall be saved out of it right and that's the elect of course not every one of israel is the elect not everyone in israel Care about the Most High. Some of them think they're above the Most High. They've they've reached a level of pride, man. They've they've matching up Esau's pride at this point, you know. Especially the Endos, man. They're really prideful. They think they can they can rule anything. They can be independent and all this. They're causing a big hindrance in Jake's life today. Uh, and every you know other nations and every, well, no, whoever they be, especially Esau, they're 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 um, constantly constantly setting up uh, Jake to be in the snares. But Jake. He wants to go against his own people most of the time. His eye is evil toward his own brother. You know, that's, that's the curses and everything, you know? And this is the slack. And this, this is what I mean. All these scriptures are supposed to bring comfort to you that you know that it's going to happen. That, you know, Psalms, uh, sorry, not Psalms, uh, Romans 15 and 4 says, you know, these things are written a full time for our learning, that we have comfort in the scriptures, that we, we should be seeking salvation, not worrying about the nitpicky things. I don't want to, I shouldn't have to tell you that dreadlocks are, are just nasty, man. I shouldn't have to have this discussion all the time. In fact, you should kind of, you should really be getting it if the, if the Lord is dealing with you though, of course. So go ahead. Yeah. Mama, good. Right. Okay, second Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when we inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is and for whom the world is created right and when you go into that you can clearly see through the precept as it says through that precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way you can see who the earth is made for so second ezra chapter 6 and verse well, we'll start at 54 and after these adam also or should i say adam also whom thou made us lord of all thy creatures of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen all this have i spoken before thee o lord because thou made us the world for our sake. See, the, the, the world was made for, for his children's sake. His elect, um, his, well, the Yasharala, the whole nation is the elect. But um, just to clarify, so I won't be, uh, for this exact example, it's talking about the whole nation. But in terms of who's going to make it on this side, it's only the elect of the house of David, which is very few. The elect of the elect. Um, the elect of the elect nation. This is Isaiah. Chapter 41, verse 8. Are you actually going to control my elect? That's not that. Um, good, good, good question. So, right. so and again, um, that goes again, those written in the book that are going to make out of these, out of these times. Because the Most High, He's going to. He's, he's going he's gonna to deliver us, man. And there's going to be miracles, man. All right, we believe that. There's going to be things 
that you don't you 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 thought oh yeah sure man like that you know all those scoffers who were laughing at things that the angels uh, read if they read some out of the script that says the angels who came to deliver them that's gonna happen again man all right his elect are gonna be delivered out of perilous times when the, when the so-called white man Esau Edom is uh putting us in in times where we're um where where where, where, where you never know really. I don't even want to go into the stuff they have. They, they probably have planned for us. Where they're going to put us, you know, in the, the prison, like Revelation two and ten, where we get tempted, the hour of temptation itself, everything that cometh upon us. When they're going to persecute us, you know, the Most High is going to He's going to set up a standard among the people. You know, uh, pursuing to Isaiah fifty nine and fifteen, uh, nineteen, Isaiah forty five and four, huh? for Jacob of Jacob, my servant's sake, and Yahshua mine elect. I have even called thee by my name. I have sent in thee, though thou hast not known me. And sometimes it talks about no, it can be dealing with sexual intercourse. It was likened unto the Heavenly Father as our husband, and we being that bride, that chaste virgin, as Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 11 and 10. Thank you, God. Again, because the Most High, like you said, has a marriage covenant with us, man. But we turned away and we went off into, you know, other gods. Essentially, it's like going after other lovers and everything, right? You know, like um, Ephraim, my tribe going after. And leading our people into the other gods, they were drawn into other lovers, man. And we were trusting, uh, we were trusting the other nations. We were leading them for support, okay. As everyone seems to be doing for Esau, the people of the world, okay. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, and verse twelve. For the devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them the corruption of life. Perfect. That was a perfect scripture again. Uh, devising and again. Um, People say you know money is the root of all evil, and then it goes into how the beginning and is is of the so idols. It's the love of money, right? It's the root of all evil, you know. And then again, uh, yeah, the love of money, that is an idol, you know. Uh, anything can become an idol. It doesn't have to be a graven work in that sense. Because hey, don't it say those who don't serve Yahweh shy you serve their own belly? What does that mean? It's going into their own desire, their mind. You know, it's, it, the belly goes into what your your heart's desire is, basically your appetites. You know, you know what I'm saying? You you um. That you make yourself a god, because again, that's that's part of that pride. You don't want to serve the Most High Yahweh. But who are we, man? We're supposed to serve the Creator, man. And when we, and when we do so, we being the the Israelites, because the other nations, they're gonna have to be, they're gonna have to be taught, hard, you know, and it's gonna bring a lot of shame to them because they're gonna find out they're wrong, you know. I can't, I can't even imagine the face of all these, like you know, the Muslims, uh, Christi Christians, the so-called Christians, all those, all those like Buddhists and whatever. They find out they're just completely full of shit. That's gonna be hilarious, man. It's gonna be like, whoa. It's gonna bring a lot of shame, but it's gonna be like it's gonna bring glory to the elect. It's gonna be a healthy shame. Yeah. A healthy shame. Hey, healthy shame, man. Hey, you know, in this truth, I've suffered many times where I've had some healthy ass shame, man. I'm like, fuck, I'm a bug out, and then I, I had to repent. But you know what it is? That's the Most High looks at that as you know, He loves you that you do that. You know, uh, it says the angels well, sacrifice of the uh, um, Romans Romans twelve and one right is another one. Another one is um, if you can get me. They are, it came to me and it, I lost it, man. I think I've just lost it. I've got right? Psalm 51, uh -huh. verse 17. Okay. The sacrifices of Yahweh Bashan and Yahweh Shai are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite right. heart. Oh, Yahweh, thou wilt right. not despise. Right. And then, you know, yeah, he, he won't despise it. There you go, perfect. And what it means to have a contrite heart is to be grinded into powder, man. And that's how they're going to feel, you know. But hey, man, you, um, as long as we're ruling in righteousness, they're not going to miss Esau Edom's kingdom. Well, I mean, maybe except Esau Edom, he definitely was going to miss ruling the wicked. But other nations, they're going to rejoice when Esau Edom do. So this is, these are the type of things we're supposed to be talking about, man. All right, this is basically what I wanted to be out here today. Uh, just go into the prophecies about our salvation and the fall of Esau Edom. Because you really should have a spirit where, you know, like, I'm sure Ban Yum Yum can agree. You should have a spirit where you just want to go, you just want to, you want to go to town on these, these devils, man. Right? Freaking wore them out. I do. I freaking. I'm. I'm angry as hell, man. I don't call myself Iowa for no reason, you know. It's like they've hated me for too long, and it's like they've been ruling in wickedness. They've been oppressing everybody. This. It's time for. It's time for. You know. It's not exactly the time, so to speak, because it's up to the Most High. But when the appointed time comes, it's going to be perfect, man. And it's, it may seem like a long time, but this is a patience game. This thing we have here is about patience, because um, as the prophecy says here, it, it's going to come out of nowhere, man. Okay. Uh, Habakkuk. So I can let me get scripture. Habakkuk chapter 2 and, and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Alright, so again, uh, it said for an appointed time, and at that time it shall speak, meaning it shall manifest. You know how it says the image of the beast, which is the philosophy, the, the doctrine, it's the way the society is built, it shall speak. It should be made manifest, you know, even more so. 
and uh, the prophecies they're, they're going you know you can see things starting up bit by bit but it shall it shall speak it'll be fully manifest you know and uh, though it tarries though it's kind of delaying it's, it's gonna happen man all right when it happens you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna think like whoa you know kind of just happens i know just like how everything of this this these, these times kind of happen like how lockdown just happened you know but so isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4 Thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Go into that list. This is talking about mystery Babylon. It's not talking about ancient Babylon. Right. There's no there's no there's no chronicle, there's no um, account that you can go into where all of this came to pass. We're starting with verses one and two, we won't necessarily touch on them. You should already know them truly. That's like common common it's not even milk, it's it's before that really. That's the sweetness. I'll do right. it first with you. It's sweetness, heart, oh, yeah. and revenge, like the brother said. Yeah. Isaiah 14, for that thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? It's prophesied that Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai will bring mercy upon our nation. That Yahweh Shai will be able to avenge those who have had us in a, in a, in a state of derision for that long. Right, because you know. It's like, you know, when you, when you go in, even like when uh, Yahweh Shai. In fact, do you mind just going? Uh, do you mind if I just go into some stuff? You know, to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, to Yahweh Shai. Let me get this one real quick. Go. Psalm chapter 72, verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people, he shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Uh, we're the poor of this world, okay? Luke, uh, Luke 4 16. You know when he goes in? Yeah. yeah. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And the he here is was, it's like it. And, he, and the he, the he in this reference is Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. This is from verse 14. And Yahweh Shai returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all, throughout through all the region round about. Right. Skip down to 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And it was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Or who's Isaiah? Or Yeshaya. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So what he's about to read is Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. Now, who is that? Referring to is talking about the, the elect of Yashara, okay? You know, what essentially as a people were poor, but only the elect are gonna be found worthy to be delivered, okay? That's only only the people the most high is dealing with, alright? The most high chooses who he wants to deal with, uh, deal with so like and deliver, alright? So it's not everybody. This is, but even though we are the poor of this world, like I said, he said to um uh, he's he's coming for those that are poor, those that are in captivity, okay? Those chains of darkness, it's not talking about hell on the ground. That's bullshit, man. That's that's what the other nations' doctrine go into. Okay? Our, our our understanding of Sha'awal or hell is, is, is the pit, and it's talking about this place. This place is freaking hell, man. Okay. Now, again, if you, I believe he goes into uh, the acceptability of the Lord, is basically where he ends. So he can just bring that up. That was being my point. For so, to set a liberty, them that are bruised, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, that's not the whole chapter. Okay. One thing, in fact, that's actually when you go into Isaiah 61, I believe that's actually like uh, like verse three, and that's not the whole of verse three. That's just one little part of it. So this is Isaiah 61, and uh, with this you got 20, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Perfect. So this part, of the, he said, this scripture is fulfilled in the ears, but that's not the whole chapter, you know. So when you go Isaiah 60, sorry, Isaiah 61. And um, uh, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's where we stop, right? Then it says, and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. All right? Now, it says there, the day of vengeance, which I believe the word there is naquam, all right? Naquam means vengeance and revenge, okay? Uh, verse 3 says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, or Taziah 1, which means uh, monument. And that's not talking about all nations. See, we're the ones that are mourning. We're the ones that sigh and that cry. And Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai Ratazah, we're the ones that actually do get delivered as well through all that. Because you know, we're the ones um, who, who, who are the hopefully elect. We want that. We want. We want that seal to be exempt from judgment. Okay. And the day of vengeance is that's not going to be a light thing. Okay. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a glorious thing though for the elect because they're going to know exactly why it's happening. They're going to see it coming. Okay. The elect are going to 
enjoy so much, man. There's gonna there's gonna be a flood of emotions, right? Happy ones, a lot of tears, because it's, it's gonna be like finally we're out of it, and and you have a shum, you have a shy. Just see, you know. Say that again. Right. Go into that. We have scripture regarding that. Because obviously there's gonna be those that are, you know that get destroyed, and yeah, man. And it could be us. It could be doing all this. You can't think. Then there's gonna be those ones that come in at the eleventh hour that have little to no works and you can't get mad at that because you, you, you're still worthy of that same judgment whether, whether the day it doesn't really matter right we've all even now we still slip up because it's, it's uh, nothing of, of our own works in this flesh not of works yeah but it's any man to verse it talks about in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 10. that's why you've always got to stay prayed up you've got to stay humble man you know it, 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 it's you've got to just um you gotta remember that we have to do the works. You know, we have to push the word out. We have to do what we can. But ultimately, it all comes. It, co it comes down to what you have about Shem Yahushai, wills for you, man. Uh, but of course, the Most High, He's not unrighteous to forget our works. You know, the Most High, he, you know, he, 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 of course, you know, and he, uh, the Most High, He's looking at those that are faithful in Him and in, in whatnot. So, of course, we, we believe that um, amongst uh, us and the body that we, we follow. We are, we are the elect, we don't know that, we just believe it, we have, belief goes into faith and confidence, you know, we, we have that true faith that we're the ones that the Most High is dealing with, that's what it's about at the end of the day, that's what, that's why the prophecies is one of the main things we're supposed to be pushing out right now, because it gives us more comfort that the Most High, with his insane amount of just, um, like insane meaning not insane, you know, just to be super clear to any of you that wants to annoy me, <laughs> alright, but his magnificent glory, um, in wisdom and everything he's been able to he's written all out he's mapped all out he sees it all already okay <laughs> so we've got comfort in that way that's why the prophecies are the main thing and you know you might sit there and say uh you know forgive and forget you know jake most of the jake does that you know forgive and forget what they've done to you you know you can do that okay if you want to be an absolute bug out if you want to be an absolute effeminate individual a soft a soft man these are the words i can throw out because that's really what you are when you analyze them you see that in them man or they're just really lost, they're just staggering the way, they're blind. There's, there's just so much you could say about these individuals, uh, of our people. If they want to go ahead and do that, if they're not the elect, go ahead. Because at the end of the day, the Most High is not forgotten. He's not, he's not, he's not forgetting anything, man. All right? He's not, in, quite frankly, he's not going to forgive them because they're not going to repent. In fact, it says that in 2nd Corinthians 15 as well, that to the scourges, they're not going to... That's 2nd Corinthians 16, right? Come on, come on. In fact, I think I read that earlier. I'll bring that up. In he's, Revelation, in certain plagues upon certain people, that they will not repent, right. they will not turn back from... Speak it louder, brother. Learned. Speak it louder, brother. The ways that they've learned. Yeah. So, in other words, um, the Most High, He's going to avenge uh, His elect. In fact, let me get scripture. Uh, it's Psalm 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. See, the, uh, uh, as the Psalm says, remember the, the children of Israel, essentially, right? Uh, when the day comes, when judgment hits, you know, we're also gonna, we're also gonna. Um, have things come upon us to try us and everything. Our faith is going to be tried heavily, man. It says, um, Who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed? Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. And we're going to be happy, man. All right, when we, when, we, when we serve, when we actually uh, give them their judgment, uh, which is going to be times two, all right, essentially. When the double unto her, double. When the double unto her, right? And that her is talking about the whore, which is essentially you know, uh, America, mystery bound in the whore. And again, it's, it's the nation of Edom, all right, who's going to get that main judgment because they're the wicked of the earth, you know? They're the, there's, that's the wicked one that's referring to, the devil, the deceiver, you know? It's talking about them, man. If not where and who is he? Right. If who, who, else is, who else is ruling like this, man? You know, our people don't really see it though. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Like I said, you can go ahead and do that. The Most High is not forgotten. And as angry as I am, I can tell you, I, I get angry. It's very angry because of being out here. And I just, I just want to, I can't stand Edomites, man. But I, 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 sometimes I go home and laugh. I'm like, that anger is nothing. The Most High's anger is, is unbelievable, man. And that's why it says, happy shall we be, because he's going to put it on us to give him, uh, to, to, uh, when we get, uh, Lord willing, we have that number, you know. The elect are going to get spiritually glorified bodies, all right super like superhuman and they're gonna come and then give the vengeance with all the chariots with your shot where all, all floods come through with, of just absolute torment for them or with the, the missiles essentially you know that's gonna be a big part of it and it says um verse 9 says happy shall he be that take it and dash that little ones against the stones good i john from a comment you made earlier about you can't just choose to come into this like even i'm not saying in the world i didn't choose the third life the third life chose me Wait, that's that's actually true to to an extent. You will 
As it says in Romans, the first chapter, you've given over to a reprobate mind. There you go. Crows messing with the flow. St. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I'll raise him up at the last day. See, that's why there's no room for pride in this, this thing of ours. You know, we, we have to be humble because the Most High, He's the one that gave us this gift of the truth. This is a blessing, man. This is a blessing. This is not something that we're supposed to take lightly, man. This is something we're supposed to go all out for now. This should be the main focal point of our life. If it isn't, then you need to you need to change that around, so. okay? Perfect, yeah, 2 Corinthians, yeah, 13, 5. I'm going to bring that up real quick. Before that, I've got James chapter 2, verse 5. How can my beloved brethren, hath not Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai, chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Right? The, the rich of this world is, is not the so called blacks, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans who are scattered across all nations of the earth, of course. That's, that's, not, that's not us, man. You know, we're, we're in the worst condition. They put us in what they call the ghettos. When you look that word up, if you go on Etim online, look up the word ghetto, okay? The word means, it, it literally um, goes into a place where they were compelled the Jews to reside, all right? And we're the real Jews, man, okay? Now, again, it says the poor of this world are chosen to inherit the kingdom, and that's talking about us, man. It's not talking about all nations, it's not talking about even a selection of all nations, man. There's a, a nation that the Most High chose for this, okay? And low willing, we're of the number who make it out of the judgment on this side. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Yahawashai, Mashiach, is in you, except ye be reprobates, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to Yahweh that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to ed edification and not to destruction. And Paul talked about in Titus, into Titus, to rebuke them sharply right. they may be sound in the faith right, right. But just because it's not a whole perceived as a lovey-dovey spirit it's still lovey-dovey man we can come at you harshly sharply how have we come if it's a, a, a spirit of correction it's a, it is a lovey-dovey spirit yeah you just are real. not able to discern that yeah you sometimes somebody just ain't ready for it you know you just don't really you don't have to handle it and you know the thing about it is, is um if, if someone's doing is doing that to you then why would how can you not take it as love because why would they do that unless they wanted the best for you you know it's like when Esau comes up, I don't tell him what to do. I don't really, uh, well, technically, sometimes I might. I might say, look, man, if you don't need him, get ready for slavery, <laughs> okay? Because that's his end. But with you, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like sharp rebuking because it's like, please get right. You know, we love you. We want you to be right. We, and we see the potential in Jake because we know, man, we're, we're, the, we're the people the Most High truly loves. And we see, we see how great we really are as a people, even when we're going off, man. All right, we see that the Most High is, is, is dealing with us and we're special people. So when we're trying to rebuke you, we're doing that because we're like, this is the truth. Imagine what you could do with the truth, you know? There's loads of brothers that go off and we think, yo, imagine if he had the truth, man. Even in other camps, you know? Like, I was saying even, you know, like Zabak, man. If Zabak could just not believe in, in nonsense, he would, it, would, it would be an interesting thing to see how he'd be with 100% truth. Hey, like B-Woods, I'd love to see that brother have the 100% truth doctrine established in his life. Because he, he is a... You're, if you're watching this, you're a very different brother, man. It, you know, you really are. You're very interesting, you know. And that's, but out of love, you, your doctrine is complete bullshit, man. It doesn't make any sense. And that's real love. That's what real love would say. The same way you say for us, man. You got scriptures? I've got 2 uh, Corinthians 13 and verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be perfect, Slaki. Yeah. Yahweh says, be perfect, uh, even as my Father in heaven is perfect. Go ahead. Yahweh shall. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the power, meaning with God, the power of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The saints that prove it's talking about the children of Israel. Right. Banya Yasharala. 
Right. It's not talking about all the saints aren't of all nations. You know, you know when you go in Revelation 13 and 10, especially, you know, these the faith and the patience of the saints. The saints are the ones that are waiting for that captivity uh, of the other nations to come through, man, for the recompense. It's like Brother Mashah said earlier, he was going to 2 uh, Thessalonians uh, 1 and 6. He says, uh, it is righteous for us to recompense them that uh, trouble us, you know. It's a righteous thing. That's why this, this, these are things we're supposed to be focusing on, man. You know, who, some of you don't even believe that the so-called white man is Esau even. And you literally know all the stuff he does. You literally call him Satan, okay. And you literally, you, you, you can see that he's the one implementing everything. But you, you still think, I don't think it's the Edomites, you know. I only think, it, it's crazy, man. They, they're literally so wicked. You must not know how wicked they are. For you to really say that the so-called white man is not the damn devil the Bible speaking, man. And then of course, there's people who, who even if you go into the chariots, they'll they'll scoff at that as well, man. They don't even believe that. But then when you uh, there's then brother like hey brother Muslim, well, like when I ask you questions, you don't even have answers a lot of the time, man. Okay? And that's a sharp rebuke openly, because I love you. Alright? There's you know, you have to be able to you have to at least diligently study to a degree, man. And Lord willing, it's, it's the Lord's dealing with you for you to you come to the truth at the end of the day. Because we don't want to see you can study destroyed. 25 hours a day, but if the Lord is not, not dealing with you, be to get it. it doesn't matter. Right. You can, literally, yeah. <laughs> and the Lord willing that, uh, Lord, Lord willing that Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is dealing, with, uh, uh, is dealing with you to a degree, or it will deal with you, shall open your eyes at the end of the day. And, yo, you can have black Edomites, red Edomites, you can have Arabic Edomites. You can, have, you can have Arab Edomites. Sound like that as well. You know, it's not about a phenotype. That's why I, I whenever I talk about Esau Edom, I rarely say so-called white, so-called this, because it's a, it's an oversimplification. Of course, you say it to be quick and to the point, but really, with the um, phenotype I've been given, that it's, it's um, counterproductive sometimes for me to say that that outright it makes me go what and just walk down the street. So sometimes you do have to use that quickness, but at the same time, sometimes you have to be more elaborate with it. Just because you look like a certain way doesn't mean you descend from a certain man. We know right. that when we say that it's a, it's a it's the ruling body of this earth currently, and we all know who that is. Even you brothers that say Saudi is, is the next kingdom or whatever, you know who rules the earth now, and we're not in the Greek Empire. So what's the fourth piece? This right. is Psalm 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with covenant with me by sacrifice. According to Paul, the covenants. Even, bro, the covenants are for Israelites. That's old, that's new. That's any co covenant in and around it. Even Noah's covenant. Why? Because he was a prince of the power. Was he an Israelite as in descended from Jacob at that point? No. But he came back. Right. He still had forefathers, what lineage that the Most High was dealing with. You know, he, you know, he uh, walked with Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he, was, he was still, uh, he was like, what do you call it? I'm sorry. A proto, proto. proto. <laughs> there you go. That reminds me too much of Sakari. Yeah, they do the drop that term. <laughs> I don't know, not a proto, uh, I guess technically that would have to be the word of, of, that I was uh, thinking of. Essentially, that is, um, but you know, I'm getting that. You know, one of the founding fathers of Israel, man. Through the sea line came Yashar Allah, essentially. Go ahead. This is Psalm 148 and 14. He exalteth also, Salaki, he also exalteth the horn of his people. The praise of all his, uh, the pray, let me start again. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Yashurala, Israel, the people near unto him. Praise ye Yahweh, right? Children of Yashurala are the elect. It says even, can you go Psalm 15 1, please? Yeah. Now the word even doesn't mean even them, you know? Because that's, that's also, how could it even mean that? That's so stupid, man. The, the, the book is dealing, it's talking about the Israelites, to the Israelites. And then it says, even the Israelites are going to make, come on man, we'll talk, what the hell, read it. Psalm 50 and 1, the mighty power, even Yahweh. See, the mighty power, even Yahweh, you know, even him, you know, that's stupid bro, that's not what it means. Even it actually is an old English word, it means indeed, that's what it means. So indeed, Yasharala is the elect, indeed the mighty power is Yahweh. The mighty power, even Yahweh, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun and to the going down thereof, uh -huh. out of Zion. The perfection of beauty, power hath shined. Our power shall come and shall not keep silence. A, fi a fire shall devour before him. To our, like our, our power in Zion, you know, of Yashurah, that's what the Zion, Zion is, you know. Israel, um, when we're talking about Zion, it's talking about Israel, our people, man. All right, so it's not for everybody to really get the graph, okay? This is um, Deuteronomy chapter 7. 
and verse where's the one that says your power oh, it's Deuteronomy 4 so that, yeah. Deuteronomy 4 and 7 for what nation is there so great who hath power so nigh unto them as Yahweh our power or Allah Hayamawa is in all things that we call upon him for and what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you to this day and I raise right. you Baruch chapter 4 and verse 4 says, O Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to the Most High are made known unto us. So we got to be a uh, next verse. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Yasharal. So again, the things that please Yahweh were made known to us, but our people don't take joy in that, that knowledge. You know, they don't they don't want to consider that. You know, it's because the Most High is not dealing with them. They've been given over and so BS this whole world and everything. And it's a damn shame. But you know what, man? It has to happen. It's expedient for there to be an elect that's going to make it. And those that aren't the elect are going to get destroyed. It's a, it's a sweet saver no matter what. But this is 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 32. Or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Yasharala? Or what generation hath so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And yet their reward appeareth not, and their labor hath no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world, and so thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Hey, and you know, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. <laughs> right. So again, you know, like uh, Elder Pastor Ari Amram said, I was actually going to call him anyway. Uh, I do it twofold now. One of the things he mentioned is there's no mistakes in. You know, if somebody looks like Brother Masha or me, and we don't look like, we're not blah, all right? <laughs> if you have that opinion, I don't really care, okay? Because it's not a mistake. We're not going to stumble into the truth. That's ridiculous. How can we stumble into a secret? Doesn't it say in Psalm 91, those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High? He's talking about this truth. Doesn't it say that the mysteries are revealed unto, unto, um, uh, unto his servants, man? Are you kidding me? How is it? How is an Edomite just gonna clock on and get full grasp of like the doctrine of 100% truth that he's gonna join? He's gonna he's gonna join the, the GMS camp. You must be out of your mind. GMS have white people in there. <laughs> stupid as hell, and man. The stood Sim next to, Jake is simple. The brother stood right. next to someone lighter than me. Would, G, uh, would GMS have white people in there? Camp? <laughs> Ridiculous, brothers. And I'll tell you what, man. If that. If that's if that's how you perceive this thing, then you judge not according to righteousness. You judge according to appearance, and you don't really know what the hell is going on in general, man. No, All he right. read that scripture. He read that scripture because there was a guy that he said, a West African, so he's not a Hamite, but he's an Israelite, and he was saying, no, 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 he's not a Hamite. Give me that scripture. Judge not according to appearance. And then he goes, you must have worked with me. This is Saint Luke chapter Hypocrites, eighteen, man. and verse one, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. Let me read it again. Saint Luke chapter eighteen. Verse 1, and he spake a, par a parable unto them to this end, the men are always to pray and not to faint. What does that mm -hmm. remind you of? Um, confounded. First Thessalonians 5 confounded. and 17. Confounded, Iowa. Which one? First Thessalonians 5 and 17. Oh, that's what you called it. Yeah, of course. Luke 18 and 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, the men are always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not Yahweh, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not Yahweh, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and, sh and shall not Yahweh avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So I read 18 and 1 and you get that. Luke 18 and 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, the men are always to pray and not to faint. Right. And of course, First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray without ceasing, you know. Then we, you know we're supposed to stay prayed up, man. Uh, uh, praying is an essential thing, you know. If you, uh, if, if you, if you really want, if, if uh, you, you want to have that relationship with Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, praying is actually... Uh, must do man if a hey, Yahawashai said it right Yahawashai's words they're, they're a commandment unto you okay the whole the whole Bible is full of it's, it's full of precepts okay um, that's why it's a statute book of the law right right it's not yeah 
Right. Seek ye out, uh, out of the book of Yahweh. And there's, there's also, um, there's a, uh, well, Yahweh Shai was, was, was referring to Psalms. What did he say? He said it was you know, written in your nomos. Written in your right. nomos. That's referring nomos. to Nomos. Deuteronomy. Deutero means second. Nomos means second law. Your second nomos. Right, right. Deuteronomy is the law. Perfect. So the whole, book is, the whole book is considered our laws, you know? Every, it's something that we govern ourselves with. It's the foundation of our life. If we don't keep this, if we don't eat the whole row and, and set up a strong foundation as a rock, then when the floods come, when adversary yeah, comes our way, we won't be uh, destroyed. In fact, I want to get that really quickly. I want to get this even quicker. You got it ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. We're going off avenging his elect. Okay, okay. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10. And they, cried with a and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? Okay. And they, don't worry, man. The Lord will. And it's going to be beautiful, man. Lord willing of that number. I just, I want to absolutely go in, man. Okay. That's what I want to do. I want vengeance big time, man. I hate this place. I look at it and it just, it makes me want to just throw up, man. Looking at this, this world the way it is. It's just, it's just, it's, it's. And it makes it's, it's more annoying when you look around. It's, it's annoying, but it's also a beautiful thing. Okay, the truth there has to be beautiful to a, a very high degree, and it, there has to also be some a just way where you it, you should be sick of this place, man. It, sh it should vex you out. Okay, especially with all this, this this BS recently with that that dude that sodomite and his stupid shoes and all that nonsense, that thing that's been pushed out and everything. All these, and you know, you can see that that the wicked spirits become more mainstream amongst you know like so-called media that pushes it out. So this stuff is supposed to vex you out. We all supposed to find it beautiful because it's according to you know uh, pursuing to Psalm 91 and, and one, we're in that secret place of the Most High. You know, we dwell in that secret place, which is the truth. You know? we'll, uh, right. So you know, we dwell in the secret place, so we have surety. We have comfort. You got scripture, so I bring this up. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. In fact, bring that. This is Matthew chapter 7, and uh, we we'll start at verse 24, I believe. Okay, it says, Therefore, whatsoever, uh, sorry, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will, like, uh, I will liken him unto a wise man which built, which built his house upon a rock. Okay, so whoever heareth the words and doeth, uh, do, actually does them. Like, you know, it says that in James, right? Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. You can't hear all this in. And agree, you gonna bring it up? Bring it up. <laughs> no, it's in good speaker for me. Oh, <laughs> it's lucky, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, so you have to, <laughs> you have to be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. In fact, you cannot do it unless you hear it, okay? And you most certainly have to do the word, not just hear it. And um, again, ha uh, if you, if you're a, if you're a brother who's new in it and stuff, you might not. You have to basically kind of graft, really, essentially, and pray the most eyes mercy on you, okay? But like Brother Masha was saying, there's going to be some people at the very last minute, they did not put a single video up on YouTube, they didn't go to the highways once. They were probably doing a, a fuck ton of sin, man. And then the last minute, they repent and they really turn all the way back. They, it hits them and, and they tremble in fear. They seek for our salvation. Guess what? They will make it. That's going to be beautiful, man. And they deserve the reward of just, just as much as whoever else gets it. Man. Come, man. Because the, 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 yeah. the first person is in your house, right? The first person in that, in that faith in sincerity. Deserves it just as much as the last person, man. Right, man. Because that's again, we not. There's no room for pride in this, man. We're supposed to be of low degree humble, man. And then the Most High exalts us because that's a blessing from Him, from how, because He is the exalted one at the end of the day. And again, it says that if you hear the words and then do them, the, the Yahweh Shai will liken unto Him as a wise man. So the men who are wise will hear these words and they will act on them, man. And it says that He will build His house. Uh, so I'll just read it. it. Says which built His house upon a rock, and the you rain descended, and the flood. No, you're good. It says, um, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So when you build your house upon a strong foundation, or a strong rock, okay, the people are going to come up. Say again? A great rock. Go. You said great millstone, man. Can't turn to lucky. It's a, <laughs> a solid foundation, man. Right, right. And uh, again, um, uh, if the adversary, if adversary comes your way, if affliction, calamities, whatever, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're true in your word, if you're actually about the truth, and the Most High is dealing with you, He's preserved you. It's not going to do anything for you apart from strengthening your faith, because it's going to all make sense. Again, you have, uh, um, not, not you, uh, sorry. 
I believe it was, yeah, yeah, Masha brought out in 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. It says, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So everything they do, the elect are going to see, like, they're going to see, this is just for the truth, man. Because it says, it says they should, um, they shall see, if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. It says, if it were possible, now that's a, um, a, a uh, conditional clause. Now the condition, it proves that it's not possible to deceive the elect. The Lord willing will be of that number, we will not be beguiled by whatever system, whatever fear tactic, whatever type of effeminate movement they want you to join into to sell out and not join into what you need to be, which is your Hawa Shai. And now whatever is, whatever yeah. idols that you want to join to it's it's it's, it's uh, well whatever any other god is is an idol. You know? Like in uh, Psalms ninety six and five it says um, this is for the for the for the gods of the nations, I'm slacking. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Okay, so all those other powers, they're not really powers. They're just they're, they're gods that are not gods. Yeah, powers that are not powers. Right. right. So again, um, that's why building a house upon the rock is really only for the elect, because it's a secret place, you know. And, and it says truly, the the rock is these scriptures, man. You can't. But the scripture, you can't. You can't. You need you need to have someone to teach you in it. You can't just work it all out by yourself. You need a body. That's right. It's necessary. So the second uh, Peter, go on, go on, go on. Uh, were you gonna bring out okay, I got this one. First Peter five and uh, verse five page before it. First Peter five and five. Likewise ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So again, if you're in the whole role, then who are your elders? Don't you think the most high will be given elders to know the truth? And to push it down to the to those that are younger, you know, because we're not elders in the faith or in age. We're actually quite young, you know. I know we can find it hard to believe because our face is full of wool, but like we're pretty young brothers, man. Okay, we haven't we haven't been in this for too long. In fact, we came in this. When I say this, we came into knowledge of the Bible as freaking rasta bug outs, man. We used to believe in that nonsense. We used to worship an idol. Okay, we used to believe it was biblical, but the Lord was actually. He actually had mercy on us. He took us out because we believed in the Bible. We thought it was biblical. So again, we we've had times where we needed took to us teach out it. of the, the confusion. He didn't take us out, but he, he could have. He would have been justified in doing so. Of course, you know. You have Isaiah thirty and verse twenty. Isaiah thirty and twenty. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Perfect. You have second Peter, and we're talking about the, the vexation of this place, man. Right. And second. a lot of you, Saki, and a lot of you are holding that. A lot of you don't actually, because you don't submit to the elders, and you have a you have a boastful spirit. You want to be the elders. You want to be the main teachers of Yasharala. You don't want to submit to the elders. All right, and that's that's a, that's not strong foundation. In fact, this is really referring to you, brothers, man. Uh, verse twenty six. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, right? Now, you may believe you're, you're following after the word, but when you go off in all these other doctrines, like, you know, Yehuda is such a, you know, I, I can't be honest, I'd be honest, you know, I, I bring you up a lot, but it's kind of because you're quite easy to compass, brother, because you have so many doctrines that just go off, that it's, it's, it's like, it, how can, how can, you're the only person with this doctrine, bro. You're telling me you're the only person the Most High is dealing with, okay? Our brothers who, who 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 kind of just mix around and go out teaching with other brothers like that, that causes confusion, man. Like, don't you think you should have an elder that teaches you the the, the doctrine? It's, it, there's only one elder Apostle Tahoe was saying it in that, that video as well. He said it's uh, there's only one doctrine. There's no doctrines, you know. This is a doctrine. This is the body of teaching. This whole role, okay. And it says um, you, you, and your house is built upon sand. Guess what, man? And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You see, because you didn't have a strong foundation, man. You, and again, those who always say stuff like, "I'm not gonna take the the RFID chip, even though I don't believe it's the mark of the beast." How the hell do you know that, man? If you don't believe it's the thing that's gonna get you marked for judgment from the Most High, how are you gonna not take it? How are you gonna get in your spirit when when all the uh, all, all the temptations come your way by the wicked when you get persecuted for it? And that's the book. The book said that, man. You're stood next to someone that's saying it's it's a philosophy, it's a doctrine. Why well, you inwardly, you're thinking it's a, it's a physical chip. That is why you're confused. That's stupid as hell. Hey, Sakano yeah. does that. With, you know what the Sons yeah, of yeah, Thunder? Yeah. They go out to camp with them. So, and it's stupid because this, this is a very common, especially in these times, man. Um, People are going to ask that question. They're going to come up to camp, go say, hey, what's the mark of the beast? What are you going to do? Hey, brother Mashai, you, you're telling me all your outside. That's stupid, man. Because the Elder Apostle Gabar was saying, 
they, it's like they only rebuke whoever rebukes them because they'll, they'll make a rebuke on someone that they because a lot a lot of what they teach is true you know they, they have a certain proportion a certain percentage yeah but they do they do go off on various areas right but it's like how can you how can you bash 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 quote unquote how can you go against and, and rebuke and say no this is off this is off this is off and then stand next to someone that has a sort of completely divergent doctrine where you're much similar you, you don't want to try and um you don't you don't you just rebuke it in it and then you, you're not trying to do unity camp because you know you know they would in any way but that's that's beside the point you know you're not seeking that quote unquote unity and then the ones that have a completely divergent you'll stand next to and teach as if you're on one accord this is amos three and three can two walk together except they be agreed the answer is no well they can but it's confusion and the lord's not the author of confusion now let me read this second peter chapter two and verse five and spared not the old world but saved noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making an making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds right. and you have the next one the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment right. to be punished see that's, that's a light work that's that's light work man that's like that's not even light work really Yahweh Hashem Yahshai it's just so easy for him to do any of this so it's like we, we shouldn't our fear should be for the Lord if we don't act up on it you know again we said it before the Most High and not, it's not about what we say it's about what the Bible says the Most High and can you get that you might as well get Hebrews 6 and 10 out right the Most High is looking at your works man you gotta do what you can okay even if it's just so little even if you know so little if your video happens to only be two minutes long because you know that little but you pushed it out that's good hey, if, if you can uh, if you if you know if you don't know exactly if you're not very eloquent with your prayers, just write it down, practice it, you know? These simple things, you always got to keep building up, building, uh, edifying, of course, building yourself up before you can build up your brothers. Because, you know, you can't really, if you're not ready, if you're not having at least the milk, at least a certain amount of uh, knowledge of scriptures, you can't really go out there and teach too much, you know? What did you want? Hebrews 6 and 10? Do you mind grabbing my two thing, fingers? This is Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shewed toward His name. He's not going to forget that. You think the Most High is looking at brothers who push out the word and He's just looking at, looking away from him and just going, Oh yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll destroy him anyway. What the hell? No man, the Most High is looking out for He's the one who puts the work, the one who puts the work out there, man. Uh, sorry, pushes the word out there, I'm sorry. And it says, um, um, which ye have shewed toward his name, as he says, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Okay? And that word minister, when you go into being a minister, you're one who like who serves, who helps up, you minister unto them, you know, like if someone's sick, you minister unto them. Like if you know, like uh, if Brother Mashal was sick, I just gave you some soup. That even that's doing even that's a form of ministry, you know. But the Service. ultimate form of ministry right? The ultimate form of ministry is, is serving Yahweh by Shem Yahshai. And this captivity specifically by pushing out the word, going out to the highways like Yahweh Shai said, okay. And there's some some of you brothers are scoffing at that. Yeah, you go out to the highways and the bowers. That's not that's not something to scoff at, man. You, you need to repent from that heavily, bro. That's what that's what it says. Okay, you go out and you but teach. It's a parable, Ark. Unbelievable, bro. Does but, that mean people get destroyed because it's used in a similitude or it's used in a lightness or it's a parable? It's a parable of destruction. So what people are going to get destroyed? There's a parable about the truth being received. So what there is, there isn't any truth getting received because it's a parable. Ark. And just to go in on the, um, the the idea of ministry, there's more than one. Where's that? Acts 16. Acts, where's that about the um, ministration? In the cer certain um, certain Jewesses in the ministrations of Acts 6. It might be Acts 6 or Acts 7. It's not Acts 10. You know I ain't too sharp with Acts, man, unfortunately. Acts. All right, Acts 6 and 1 And in those days when the number of the disciples multiplied There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministrations And the, Gre <laughs> the Grecians, yeah man, that proves it 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. It's talking about money, man. It's talking about the Ionians, man. <laughs> you know, it's so well, it's the Ionians. It says Ionia. You know, that's it. Because there, there, there was a middle wall partition between between those that were. No, there was a middle wall of partition between the Israelites and everybody. <laughs> not everybody, because not the Hamites, just the Grecians, okay? Yeah, you know, the Greeks and the Jews hated each other, but now they're back together <laughs> with a flood of sweet cheeses, man. How the hell can anybody believe that, man? I'll tell you how, because the Most High gave them over to lies. <laughs> the, the Most High is not dealing with a lot of people. And we have faith that we're, we're, we're going to make it to the end, as long as we... Um, because we, we have faith, we have the 100% truth. Under the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, of course, we don't sit here and say we, we just come up with all this. And, you know, it, it goes Although back we did, we did say that, <laughs> and that's a major, major stumbling. Yo, we, no, brother, you mix a bit here, you take a bit there, and this is the doctrine, man. No one set up to teach us. We're the teachers. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make it. <laughs> what the hell? Like it's crazy to look back at now. How the hell did? How the hell did we believe that? <laughs> we're literally talking about this like yesterday or the day before. Or something. Oh, yeah, man. basically just me. It's just like, how does that even make sense? <laughs> how can? Little things, man, little things, but when the most I reveal it to you, you, you can't really look back, you know? It's like, you know, the, the brother was saying uh, about how, you know, when he tries to give up at certain things, it just doesn't work, like, he just can't do it, he doesn't know how to start. Like, I laughed so hard, because I was like, bro, that is the truth. I didn't mean to laugh so much. If you're watching this, you know, I didn't mean, I was laughing, because I was like, bro, that is a good, that is the best way to say it. I don't even know how to start, because the truth is, is once you learn, you can't go around it. It's just like the lunar Shabbat, you brothers just don't get something that's so clearly there, man, because you just... Completely we didn't going get off. Yeah, because now we completely going, going off. And now, and now we, look, we look at it now, so how do we not get it? Go ahead. I've got Ephesians. I think we should go through the whole of Ephesians, the second chapter. Now. Go for it. So Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And to quicken, it means to like raise back up. It means like to let you revive, to give you life. You know how like somebody be, would be, um, somebody would be dead. And they'll be quickened. And the way we the the way we get quickened, as you know, this originally. This is the book of Saint John chapter six. I'm going to beat you. Okay. This is the book of Saint John chapter six and sixty three. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. And that's what Yahweh Shai said to them, right? And the, and um, again, this is Psalm one nineteen, and I believe it's verse fifty. Okay. It's lucky. Page before. Uh, Psalm one nineteen and verse fifty. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. See that comfort in affliction again, because you have to you have to have faith that the words will speak where there will be persecution or right, affliction. We talk again. This is Psalm 119 and 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Again. So the word is what, what, what quickens you, right? The word is what gives you that life out here. They 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 can't they can't make you get put down in uh, and make you feel dead, all right? Because the Most High has given you that life through His Word. Ephesians two, Ephesians two and one, and you hath He quickened, which means what? Well done. And you and you hath He quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. All right. So who? Again, prince of the power of the air, man. Alright, because right now, this ruler, this rulership right now is, is actually by Esau Edom and that is like, you know, we don't have to bring it up too much, it is a so-called white man inherently, of course, they're going to look like different nations too, but that's their typical phenotype, so to speak, alright, they look like that, that's a mark on them actually, to show you that they're wicked, alright, the sin, you know, and, uh, and uh, they're the man of, the, the man of sin is in fact Esau Edom, and of course, as it says, right, the course of this world, right, because, um, and the time passed, we walked, we did a walk according to this world, okay? I had vain dreams. I wanted to be like a basketball player. I wanted to do stuff that don't mean nothing really in this world. I wanted to make it Esau's kingdom basically, you know? I wanted to have a life in this world, even though I really didn't like this world. I didn't understand it. All these things built up, it never really made sense till it finally did. Because the Most High delivered it to me. And it was like, what the hell? It was a beautiful thing, right? Um, and again, to walk according to this world, the course of this world will mean to also follow the doctrines, of course. And the only way we can go out there is to have this, the rock foundation. You Verse 3. Among whom... Oh, I'm oh. sorry, brother. I'm sorry, brother. You know what it says? And again, that's why it says, The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedient. You know, because we're our people. We're disobedient as hell, man. We, we don't obey the words of 
of, uh, of almost anybody sometimes, really, apart from really Esau Edom. <laughs> but go ahead. Among, this is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, right, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, right, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, right, the children of wrath, because wrath was coming towards us. In fact, that many times in the world, I'm sure we can all have our, our stories, we got chastised, okay? It's like with me, I told you I, play, I used to want to play basketball. Hey, I had a, I had a concussion that, that that injury changed my whole life. All right, it changed my whole life, man. All right, so that was a chat, that was, that was the most high putting, making that happen, right? He, he put it on the spirit, okay? For that to occur to me. It, it, all, it all manifested, right? Wherever the, whichever way he wanted to orchestrate it, it was all perfectly predestinated for me, for that to happen to me in my life. For things to lead on, okay. In so, the present, but it seemeth to be joyous. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. Hebrews man. chapter twelve and verse eleven. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. See, it's like when you take your child, like your child messes about. You might just smack him over the head. What the hell are you doing, man? You might just, you might say, you know, you, you can't do that again, okay? That's dangerous. You're going to put yourself in a serious risk. You're going to bring so much, uh, you're going you're gonna to bring shame to me, to, to my household, and you're going to make us feel upset, all right? Because we love you, all right? You know? You might, you might hear people say that quite a lot, all right? In, in, in terms of, uh, like, you know, man, um, in terms of your parents, they might, they might give you a chastening. That's out of love again. It's like how rebuking is love, okay? It may not feel good to get smacked. I know I don't feel good whenever I got in trouble, man. I got smacked. I was like, ah, oh, man, God, I'm, I'm sick of this, man. I won't leave this house. But the truth is, is he was looking out for me, all right? So I don't, and I didn't leave no house, all right? Because of course I ain't going to do that. Because then the day you sit there, you think, all right, this is, you know what, this is bad. But yeah, you have to, you know, he is right. When you sit there as a child, when you humble yourself as a child, you realize, yeah, what I did was stupid as hell, man. I've also got 2 Corinthians 13, 11. But I believe right, I've got Syrah, got, Syrah okay, okay. or Ecclesiastes 13, 1. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. Verse 2. He that chastiseth his son shall have joy in him, and shall, shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Uh -huh. Though his father die, yet he is though he were not dead, for he hath left one behind him. That is like himself. All right. And again, that's that. Uh, that's that leaving that name again. Okay. Because your children, the 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 children, if you're a man of the Lord, your children are uh, Lord willing, they'll they'll keep that building up that house that you built already. Okay. Which is a wisdom. It's not of it's not of this world. Otherwise, they just they liken them to just brute beasts. I think if I can get it. Uh, this is a uh, First Peter chapter two and twelve. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Okay, and they don't understand it because it's not been revealed to them. So they speak evil of it, and that to be as a brute beast is to be as like an animal, to be animalistic, to kind of rage as a, as the way like um, like a dog kind of. Think about a dog. They're, I mean, our people with the world, you know, the scriptures say they liken unto dogs. If you can receive it, the woman of Canaan, that wasn't a heathen man. He was actually calling an Israel. Like so many don't teach that, bro. That <laughs> that out a dog. Right, that's in Revelation, can if I'm mistaken. You know, it says, um, I just don't know where exactly, man. 22. Is it 22? Yeah. I would say. Lord willing. Oh, I think, you know what, I believe it is, you know. Revelation 22, la, 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 if I can get it, if I can get it. In the meantime, this is wisdom yeah, it's of like, Can I get this real quick? Yeah. Uh, Revelation 22 and 15. Uh, no, sorry, I'm going to start at verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. But without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So does that mean that they're Canaanites? <laughs> it says, who's, when it says without are dogs, right, and sorcerers, again, that, that woman of Canaan, the woman of the land that was actually an Israelite, okay, and he called her a dog, man. Because some of our people, some of you love all this nation building, and you forget that some of our people, even knowing that they're the Israelites, people. Are, are, are wicked as hell still, man. Dogs, they're still dogs, man, the way they move, man. We were dogs, man. Of course, bro. We were Rastafarian dogs. Absolute dogs, man. Neglected dogs with stupid turd locks <laughs> on our fucking head, man. 
And again, that's why they like brute beasts, bro. They like they, they just bark at you. They don't they don't say anything that makes sense. It's just like why are you here? It's because someone hasn't put a damn leash on your head and thrown a Scooby snack on the side. And, and Esau the, will the, do the, that. The, the leash, you know? bro. The true leash. What does it say? Bind her, bind her commandments about your neck. Can't. Because that's it's meant to keep you. Paul said he was a prisoner of Yahweh Shai. Right. Philemon. I think to get that. Philemon no. in the first verse. And then I've got someone there. What we're talking about with the chastisement of children. Because we're likening them to children. When you when you go into that word children of Israel as well, I think it was Numbers 12, and it was um, Yashur and Milwaukee, or whatever, and they were trying to say, no man, it says the children of Israel are meant to be as of your brothers are going off. But Yahweh Shai, he did, he did have his Passover among, it was, a, it was a very small amount of people, it was purely men, purely men. And he goes, see, it says children of Israel, sons of, no, children of Israel. When you go into that term where they were saying, see, see, it's got uh, women and children as well. The, the word was what? Banya. Meaning sons, plural. Yeah, go ahead. Right. This is a this is a book of Philemon, chapter. Oh, there's only one chapter, so verse one. Paul, a prisoner of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from from uh, Yahweh our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai. I thank my power, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the, uh, the Lord Yahweh Shai and toward all saints, and again the saints of the Israelites. Yeah. So he's a prisoner. Uh, that's uh, possibly right. I, I found it right here actually, verse nine, right? Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the age, and now also a prisoner of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai says to take up his yoke. You know, the yoke is easy. The burden is light. Right. The burden is what? It's light, because. Uh, because he is the light, okay? He, the word, the word is 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 uh is life and light, and he is the word. So everything he says, we have to go according to it. If we go off, then we're we're not in. We're, we're going to, away from the light, essentially, you know. Because we might slip up, okay? I, I, you know, in in the Pesach, I, I I'm I'm slack here. Uh, during the feast of unleavened bread, I accidentally had some of the had yeast in them, and I felt I actually cried. I was like, damn, man, I felt awful, bro. And I didn't mean to do it, and it was like it was the last thing you would expect to have yeast in it. But it happens, man. It slips up. You gotta pray. And the Most High, if He looks upon you and you really, did, you know, He He knows you're sincere, even though He led you into that, you know, if you can receive it, He wanted you to go there. You know, He saw it all happen, but He said, you know, He wanted you to go to it. He wanted, and 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 your response was, if you have righteousness and you repent, the Most High is gonna look at that too. Again, the Most High is merciful, man. But the Most High has a lot of wrath He's gonna pour out. And Lord willing, we get to be part of that wrath because I'm sick of this place. But go ahead. <laughs> same thing. Same thing, man. And it was a comfort with the video of shame, the shame the other apostle to how went into it, the other apostle to bow went into it. It's the whole, well, what, what was your spirit like after we joyous? We like, oh well, you happy about it? Did you like, oh well, that tasted good? Or were you, you, were you in a cast down state, man? Like, shit. Yeah, man. I felt like shit, man. No. I felt like I, I felt like I didn't, I just didn't get it. I was like, how the hell did I let this let this happen? It was like the first day. And it might happen, hey, slip up so happen, man. Unfortunately, you know, it is an unfortunate truth. You know, it's just very like it seven times. Yeah, that's uh, Proverbs 24 and 16. It's a very common scripture brought out as well, you know. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and uh, verse 16, okay. It says, a just man falleth seven times. How many times a just man falls? Seven times. Does that mean literal? The eighth time you fucked? No, it just means a complete amount of time. Seven represents a uh, completeness, you know, like. The, uh, in a, on the seventh day should be the Shabbat. That's that has the pattern. The, the number has a meaning of complete completion, right? Now this is uh, Proverbs twenty four sixteen. For a just man falleth seven times, many times, and riseth up again. All right, he'll fall, but he'll rise up. He's not gonna he's not gonna fall out into the wicked. But however, but the wicked shall fall into mischief, right? So you know the wicked ones, the ones who trust in Esau, Edom, they're not gonna fall and get back up, unless the Most High uh, actually puts it on them. Okay, that's the only way. Got scriptures? I've got you got a reason to be way past the point now, but just talking right. about that, we. I, and I got, I got mashed up, man. As soon as I did that, I got mashed up. I could, like, I got a proper sore throat where it was. A sore throat doesn't seem like a major thing until you've got one. It's just, it's just an inconvenience. Yes. Shah always says that. It's true as well. You go ahead. It just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not like you've got your, your head chopped off or anything like that, but it is something that'll make you think, like, it's, it's constant, man. It's a constant reminder, like, I fucked up, man. And. I, I was out for like a good, a good week. Obviously, I still had to go to work or whatever. But it, it, it keeps you in remembrance of these things and it remembers that 
even that is mercy, man. Even that is grace. Yeah, man. So you've got the wisdom of Solomon 4 and 1. Better it is to have no children and to have virtue, for the memorial thereof is immortal, because it was known with Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and with men. To Syrac chapter 16 and verse 3. Trust not thou, oh, Salafia. To Syrac 16 and 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons, though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of Yahweh be with them. Trust not thou in their life, neither respect their multitude, for one that is just is better than a thousand, and better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. And that's a, that's a very, um, what do you say, a very, it's very um, hilarious, it's very extreme, man. Better it is to have no children at all, than to have ones that are wicked. Yeah. The scriptures, um, I believe it's, it might be in Sarak 41, okay, where it speaks of, um, damn, do you know what it is? Where it says, um, uh, uh, not, I believe it may say something along the lines of not enjoy the multitude of wicked children or sin for children. Are oh, you ready? You ready? Where it's Sa Sarak 16 and 1, desire not a multitude oh, of un unprofitable children. I'm clearly Neither I'm not delighting. listening, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Neither delight in ungodly children. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes sometimes you're listening with one ear and you're trying to use your brain yeah. on the other side to like, well, what can I link up with that? Yeah, like I was just looking through the scriptures and then and so that kind of happened. So sorry about that. But, you know, uh, that's the point anyway. You know, the children, when they're going off, it's so it's it's a struggle. I remember like I used to like when going out to I'm not allowed to see them no more, you know, because I, I don't deal with no Islam. But I used to go see like my uh, sister. They got they got a different dad, but I still call him my sister. You know, she she uh, her children and whatnot. I used to go out to see them. I used to be kind of excited, right? But oh, I'm gonna see my nephew and nieces again. I go there after 10 minutes. I'm like, shut the fuck up! You're so loud. I was like, it's so mad. It's because they're just sinful as hell. You can't really. It's so hard to enjoy them, you know. It's so hard to enjoy your children if they go off. If you have children as well, it's like that, man. But at the end of the day, you gotta do what you can. Imagine if they if they came out of your loins, how much more you'd feel like hey, yeah. vexed by that again, vexed by Real. the filthy conversation. Right. Yeah, okay. vexed, and that's that's also love, by the way. That's also righteousness if you feel like that. Because you're, you're vexed because you're like, please, man, just listen to me. A lot of the time, they're listening to Eve, you know. And um, my scripture here, this oh, is um, um, uh, Sarak chapter 27 and verse 6. The fruit declareth that the tree have been dressed. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Okay. Again, the same way it likened unto a tree and the fruits thereof. Okay. The things you say, uh, the teachings that you give out. You can tell if this, this is uh, Sarak 27 and verse 6. The fruit declareth if the tree have been dressed, so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Yeah. It says um, in verse uh, 7, praise verse no seven, man. Uh, the one I just read, Ecclesiastes 27 and 6. Alright. It says, uh, praise no man before thou hearest them speak, but this is the trial of men. If Look thou, at his garment though. If thou, <laughs> If thou follows like the Sakano niggas out there stupid they, 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 they didn't they didn't even keep I don't even know what to say about that. I don't wanna say the word of anything pertaining to the scriptures and what they did, but those niggas are through man. They they're absolutely bugged the hell out. It says um if thou follows righteousness thou shalt obtain her and put her on as a glorious long robe. You know? That's the gun right there, right? That's that's that that's that you know, this is spiritual covering we have upon us to cover us of our shame. You know? Um and this verse 9 says, The birds will resort unto their like, so will truth return unto them that practice, uh, practice in her. Can't, can't. Perfect. And it says, um, you know, again, that's not, that's not what, the, what, the, uh, what, the, what the wicked do, though. The wicked aren't about this, man. They're not about con conforming to the righteous. In fact, really, man, a lot of these Edomites, they love the fact that they're wicked. They, they take joy in it. They, they think they'll never fall. And that's why they need to fall, man. That's why I can't. Like, Lord willing, man, I just want to, I want to be a part of their fault. I want to be part of that. I want to go through that spiritual war, okay? I don't know if it's because I'm around Banyamian a lot. They're just putting it on me, you know? Because <laughs> it's, it's mostly just Banyamian out here, you know? So I'm always like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of ravening myself a little bit. But a, a lot of it is because I live around these, these damn Edomites, quite a lot of them, right? Like, for those in America, I'm, I'm around equivalent to like a, where you get a role, like a redneck area. You know how Jake's live in the redneck area? Yeah, I live in, a, in that area. We call them Chavs or Slavs or whatever you want to freaking call them, right? And they're everywhere, man. I just, I just hate them, man. I hate them. I hate them with perfect hatred. And uh, it says in verse 10, As the lion lieth in wait for the prey, so sin for them that work iniquity. 
Yeah. Alright, so that's how you that's how you gotta think about it, man. Yeah, it reminds me of that one sin wait at the door, sin life at the door. Oh yeah, can't Genesis. sin life perfect. Genesis chapter four, right? Oh. If you don't, you, a sin life at the door. Hey, you wanna you wanna basically you wanna do sin, it's right there, open that door to, to, to wickedness. And Esau, he 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 tap dances right through that door, man, on a daily basis. Because he's a freaking devil, man. Alright? It's and it says, sorry, my bad, brother. This is actually the main scripture right here. The and discourse and then, and then after of the. Uh -huh. I've got the one about Simon. Come, come, I got you. Uh, this is Sarai 27 and uh, 11. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom, but a fool changeth as the moon. You probably saw me looking for a verse. I was looking for this one. And I, funny enough, I wasn't looking for this verse. And it just came up right now. This is the scripture. I read it again. If, uh, it says, The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom, okay? But a fool, a fool changeth as the moon, because the moon goes through phases, you know? All right? But out here, we don't, you know. We don't have, it's not a phase, it's not a phase, mom. It's just who I am, <laughs> all right? You know, but with them, it is a phase. It goes through phases like a, a, like the moon, as it says. I don't need to say anything else. That's kind of a self-explanatory one. But the brother wanted me to read the one about the robe, right? So I write 27 and 9. Oh, uh, no, sorry, verse 8. If thou followest righteousness, thou shalt obtain her, all right? To obtain her if you follow after her, okay? And put her on as a glorious long robe. In 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 37. Oh, receive the gift that is given you. And be, be glad, giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. And what is that feast? What feast is Yahweh Shai known as? The Pasach. Our Passover. No, our Passover. And the word, you know. That's why we're always talking about a little leaven. Leaven's the whole lump. And leaven is referring to you know false doctrine, any wickedness, sin, malice, all of that, man. That's all. Anything that's essentially off, it will, it will, it will, it, it, it will, um, it will make the whole doctrine false. That the bread is is the doctrine that's referring to. You leaven it a little bit, the whole thing is now false. All right. So your doctrine, if it's not 100% truth, even according to you, your doctrine, your doctrine's done out here, man. Okay. So again, that's that's for all you. That's for all of you that simply you you actually admit you don't. Yeah, you say you don't have 100% truth. Yeah, why the why do people listen to him then? Why would you willingly go off like that, man? Don't willingly walk into bullshit, especially when it's quite you know that well you know it's, I I say a lot of times obvious because you know as the other apostle Gabbai said this truth there is quite a simple thing but so are you brothers really so you're not really gonna get it you know it's not for you to get man you can't really see the wickedness when it's in front of you but the right the the wise will see it, okay the wise they're gonna see what's going on that's a that's a good one if you get that I was gonna bring a uh, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot I was gonna bring out. So you can have that one as well. Okay, okay, Slaki. I really wanna oh no, I do remember Slaki, it just came back to me. All oh, praise Yahweh Ba Sham Yahweh This is Proverbs fourteen. This and, is um uh, it's fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Fourteen and fifteen. No, you, Proverbs. you started it, but then I just I just did that thing. No, it's cool, it's cool, cool. It says the the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man look uh, looketh well to his going. Okay? So a man of prudence he will, he will constantly search out the man. He'll listen, but he won't. He won't dive into it straight away. All right, you don't just listen to something. You don't just just because a brother from Egypt told you came in and said, "Come it, come it, black Egypt, I'm in raw. I'm in raw." Yo, who do you have patience, though, brother? I have to say that, man. <laughs> you do have patience. And just Yo, to you clarify, have to, you have to commend, <laughs> commend the brother where he's correct. Facts, and it, facts. And he, he's got a lot of patience. Bro. Yeah, man. I was. Hey, you're that right. Brother, that, you, I've always said that about that brother. Yeah, yeah, he's got patience, man. For, for David the Christian, you had insane patience. I, I actually, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, this brother is on point, you know? And that guy was cussing Yo, you out. Give you Yehuda a hand. Bro. Hey, that's, that's right, brother. That's right. No, All right? Seriously, on a serious <laughs> note, man, you, you, have, you have patience with that. You have patience with that. Right. That's one thing I respect about that brother. Go on, man. And we love you, but you're off as hell, man. <laughs> you know? That's why I said you're pretty easy to come back, but we do love you heavily. All right? And it says, um, oh, I'm sorry. That was actually it. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay, okay. This is Proverbs chapter 8 and verse. Birth. Old English word of verse. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this is Proverbs chapter eight and verse one. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Right. She standeth in the top of the, of high palaces, by the way in the places of the paths. Okay. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, uh -huh. at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Mm -hmm. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. 
for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is about is an abomination to my lips Jehovah Shai said I believe what's that Matthew the 12th chapter he said that every tumultuous Jacobite Jake's it's probably folly anyway I don't know why I'm sorry man I'm looking out but I don't no, think it's you have to be much. circumspect and something yeah, like that yeah of course of course sometimes Jake gets violent over bullshit as well so it's like you know you just want to make sure it's not too crazy man Matthew What's the scripture? Every idle word which men shall speak shall be given account in the day oh, of judgment. Damn, where is that scripture? Man? Every idle word. It, should, it has to be John. Why do I think it's a twelfth chapter? I think it's a twelfth chapter. Let me search it. Matthew twelve. I'm here. Oh. I was reading the 13. You know how it says at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it says Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 12 and verse. I'll read off a bit. In fact, I'll read from 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. That goes again. For the, for the, so go ahead, good. For the tree is known by his fruit. Right, and again, if the, if the, if the tree is dressed, the fruits will be good, you know? You know? And it says, um, you know, we're not, what we're, we're, we're trying to say is, is the fruit of the tree, the tree in fact is the individual, the man, as it was in the garden as well, okay? Again, Yehuda, you're easy to come back. There wasn't a tree of fruit and there wasn't an actual talking snake, brother. All right, so again, uh, the fruit, if it's if it's good fruit, it's because it, it was a good tree. You can't have a corrupt tree bringing forth corrupt fruit, okay? And that's basically Yahweh Shai's teaching. And that's why that book in Sarak is, uh, sorry, that verse in Sarak was actually a very good one as a witness too. St. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34 O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? How? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And what's that? That's an action. Although it's a spiritual... Um, what's, it, what's that one? The mark is the, the um, interpreter of the cognitions thereof or something. In the, in the Apocrypha. I'm not sure. Is that, the scripture we, I brought earlier was another... Is it, you can use that as a witness. And then this scripture is an interesting one. I, like it sounds like, I've, 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 like I have read it, but a long time ago. For me, I don't think I haven't brought that out any time recently. It's not cognition. What is it? It sounds familiar though. Like something you're saying in that sentence is ringing the bell big time. It could have just been the verse I brought up though. No, actually, you didn't say cognition. That's what I'm thinking. But of. It? No, we do some cognition. It's something like the um, the, the, the words words interpret your brain in it. While Brother Mashal is getting it though, Lord willing he finds it, okay? This is um, the book of Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 16. No, 17, I'm sorry. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, right? All right? But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. But I thought six and stones would break my bones, but words would never hurt me, right? Isn't that what they... That's beautiful. I was score going all out. <laughs> so it says, um... um it says that uh, the words will actually like break the bones. The words do hurt, man. Let's be honest, man. When you was growing up, and Esau was harassing you, talking a lot of stuff to you. You and you weren't taking that lightly, man. You was angry as hell. That ruined that ruined your whole day. Imagine that happens in the morning too. Then you have to take the bus to school. The whole day in school, you think about how you want to stop on it. You know, you get all angry, man. Especially if you're in the world. You know how it is with us, man. Completely crazy. <laughs> you know, that's that's part of the curses too. So you know, the things you say, it, it, it is going to be held against you okay you have to really be careful what you say man big time and especially the ultimate thing is what you're teaching that's the main thing you need to really be on check about obviously it's everything but if there's anything to prioritize man you make sure you say it right when you when you say your teachings man all right like people like nate man he's, he's got a lot he's got a lot to really count for man because the fact that he's mocking you how you how shy you don't mock those names it's you know the name the name is the fame shum okay 
You know, it was a saying uh, in Proverbs 22 and uh, verse 1. I brought that out today, in fact. The video I put out today. This is Proverbs 22 and verse 1. It says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Because, you know, it says that your name is above the riches, but what you make for yourself. You know, if, if, you are, if you're a man that didn't have abundance of, of money, but you had a good heart to... In fact, there's a scripture now in Sarek. Whether you be poor or rich, if his heart is good towards the Lord, you know, it, and that's that's going to make your name, okay, okay? And it says it will give you a lot of loving favor, essentially, over all gold and stuff. That stuff doesn't that stuff doesn't hold forever, man. And another witness is Ecclesiastes chapter seven and one. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the or the day than the day of one's birth, okay? That's it on that. And that's that's a cup for celebrating birthdays. Yeah, of course. You should rather celebrate your funeral, right? This you can't. You know what I mean? Excuse me. It's like um. <clears throat> it's like Job, you know. Yeah, Job's yeah, children, yeah, 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 yeah. right? They, 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 they had a feast. Right. They had a feast. They had a feast for for their for their day, you know. And he, and he's and uh, what did what did I I always say? He said that um, I think it's the third. Chapter. It's the first chapter. The first. Where, yeah, the exact right in the beginning actually, where literally. It might not be the third verse. Maybe that's what you're confusing with, right? I believe. Uh, okay, the book of Job, chapter one, and um, no, it's it's, it's verse five. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified the them. What's the context? My bad. Uh, Might be three. Verse four. It's verse four. And his sons. You keep wanting to give verse three, brother. What's up? What it, says, it says uh, what his substance three? also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. He had an abundance, man. You know. And it said, and his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Uh huh. And it says, <laughs> and it says, uh, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. They rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number to the number of them all. But Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed the Most High in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. And guess what? When you when you do stuff like you don't really truly honor um, uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. In fact, the way you guys have treated the Pesach, man. You, you, honestly, bro, I don't even know what to say. There's just so much you can say, but I don't want to waste my time talking about that right now. But anyway, just go ahead, bro. Forget all that. Forget all that. Man. This is Sirach chapter 17, and verse 5. They received the use of the five operations of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Which is what? You smell, you taste, you touch, your sight, your hearing. It said they received the use of the five operations of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. And in the seventh, speech, an interpreter of the, cogi of the cogitations thereof. So that was it, not cognition, but it's, it's similar. It's, it's the with, can't, can't. with driving or the with moving of, of your, um, your co cognizance. What scripture is that? Well, no. Sirach 17 and 5. They received the use of the, they received the use of the five operations of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech an interpreter of the cogitations thereof, and counsel and a tongue, and eyes, ears and a heart, gave he them to understand. Withal he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and shewed them good and evil. Right. He set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Mm. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rafa Kadash. That's not to say we're of the elect, but you, that's, that's a, um, a qualifier, is that you'd have to call upon the name. And when, yeah, you, when you hear that, the it's, it's, it's comforting and it makes you want to praise the name anyway just for the fact that um, there will be an elect they're, they're in wicked wicked flesh man wicked right. flesh yet it'll still redeem those spirits and that's mercy that's grace that's the whole psalm 136 right do you mind if i read that of course not. just verbatim all the way through His mercy endured forever as it said and the psalms you remember the psalms are meant to be sung man it's, it's not obviously it's not you're not necessarily going to sing it well you wouldn't hear it sung in the English in the ancient time but it's still it's still that's why it's a repetitive pattern sometimes this is Psalm 136 
Or give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Or give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Or give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Yasharala from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Yasharala pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sion king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Yasharala his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever. And hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Or give thanks unto the power of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Beautiful. And there's some scriptures there <clears throat> that have good parallels, you know, they stretch forth army deliver us, and that shall happen to the elect again, you know. Uh, Isaiah chapter 59. And by the way, another good one is just to cut the so-called book of Joshua, because it says that Pharaoh repented before the floods came, and he, he somehow, you know, the Lord delivered him out of it, apparently, is what that, that says. That's not true. It said Pharaoh was also wiped out in there. Not particularly. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it is <laughs> Isaiah, 50, <laughs> Isaiah 59 and verse 1. Behold, your Yahweh's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. You see? The most high he is this. Unless you turn your ear away from hearing the law, perfect. Your prayer will be abomination. It will get shut down. Right, access denied. Abomination, I mean it's disgusting. Most I look at it like it's just good, man. When, when you do it, if I'm not mistaken, every time abomination is used in terms of works, it's a punishment of death. Am I going off and saying that? I'm uncertain. That's something Salaki. Don't you know research it man? Yeah. Research it and I will research it, Lord willing. Lord willing. This brother will research it, Lord willing. We might even do it together. Come. We're on the journey home. Come. Uh this is um Ephesians chapter two. Oh yeah. <laughs> you you, you, you be forgetting, bro. Right? You be and forgetting. I, I, quick. I'm, fam, <laughs> Ephesians 2 is worse when I'm by myself. Yeah, yeah. But the Most High, who was rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, right? So, again, rich in mercy, man. You know? It says that his, you know, it says, it says for his great love wherewith he, he loved us. You know, and we, our people, where has he loved us? And, you know, that's Ooh, what. Ooh, what's that scripture, man? What, end dubs? The end dubs scripture, Micah 7 and 10. No, 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 no. That, nonetheless, but. <laughs> the one that says, yet you say, wherein hath he loved us? Malachi 1, bro. Malachi 1, verse 2. 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. Let's bring it out as well, because I was going to go out anyway. Just to be. You said Malachi? Did you just say that? Just now? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe. Okay, okay. You said it like you just said. I didn't know. I, 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 I had a feeling I was going to bring it out anyway. It's no big deal. Malachi 1 and 2. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein hath thou loved us? See how people do that. And especially this, uh, the so-called black woman, all right? Or the end of right? The end of do that a lot, man. It's fucking annoying. They always talk about where's 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 your God now, nigga? You ain't got shit. There's always all this yappity yap stuff. Okay, because I hear that from Jake. Yeah, I hear that from man Jake. Yeah, the male Jake, the man Jake, the NM, the man. You know how you have for a duck, you have a mandre. Well, you have a man Jake. Yeah, man. That's all I hear from it. Oh, well, why was why was still in slavery, man? Why was still in slavery now? Nah, man. It's not about that. And anyway, I'm in fucking raw. <laughs> the most listen, the most high wants us to be in slavery right now. That's why we're here, alright? You got a problem, man, then just shut up, man. Just shut up. It's nothing it's nothing to do with us. How how are we supposed to answer that question? Who are we, man? Again, we're not boasting ourselves to know. 
we're here because this is our part of our chastisement we, we have to still be here because the most high said so as much as you want to get the hell out of it we're in time out all right yeah we're spiritual, we're, time we're spiritual. Out. not the way esau does it no way where we actually get raised up to be to be righteous men and we thank our fathers our heavenly father ultimately you know for chastising us man we used to be kings right i was a no i didn't get to see it and in fact i can look at my notification oh. and say exactly whose video it is Ephesians 2 and 5, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Mashiach, by grace, yes, uh, by grace ye are saved. Again, by grace we're saved, okay, and it says quickened again, we're ra through faith. raised up. And the way, also way we're going to be raised up is, uh, is, is that time, well, the old, you know, we're going to be, um, um, we're going to be changed as well, man. That's going to be beautiful. That's what I, uh, you know, you can probably tell, that's like my favorite prophecy. I can't wait to, to have a stronger body, man, and everything, man, and like to, um, to not have corruption and stuff and to actually look like Jake I'll be honest I, I don't like looking like this I don't like looking all confused and shit I don't like that shit right and I, you know, I, I want us to all as a body be like superhumans imagine how much how the amount of glory that the most I will bless us with you know like the brother like the brother from the Philly camp he saw like, yeah you know he was, he was playing around saying he's gonna dunk on you right well it might be like that right we might we might be able to have real competition now as well because all of us gonna be at optimum health <laughs> we it might says, have a lot of fun <laughs> that, um, we shall boast in, in their wealth in, hey. in, your, in their um in their riches shall you boast that's in psalm isaiah, isaiah 61 60. right is it yeah 61. Isaiah 60. No, 61. Riches. it might be both you know because that scripture does go into riches i believe riches shall you boast uh, but the exact the way you're wording it, it seems Isaiah 61. Let's just proof check this. Isaiah chapter 61, and um, yeah, verse six. It says, uh, "But ye shall be named the priest of the of your power. Men shall call you ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves." Is what I was thinking of. Eat the riches of the nations, right? And all the stuff they took from us, and the stuff they have that they, all the stuff they made for themselves that we can, that we're gonna take and use for ourselves, okay? The stuff that are profit, hey, including them, they're not obviously the way they're profitable is, is for us to force them into their labors, man. Especially Esau, Edom, okay. When your Hawashi returns, that's what's happening, man. If you, if that hurts your feelings, a lot of you get your feelings all hurt. Really, this isn't for you, man. You don't really know you don't know who your enemy is clear enough. Okay, you don't really see how wicked Esau is. He is he is the piece fashion to be the perfect devil, man. I mean, he needs to be gone. He's to and be. We good. commend him for that, man. He's done a good job. <laughs> you had your run, Esau, you know. How'd you go? You did well. Well, it will go down. Right, so I've got first. No, I don't. I've got first Corinthians chapter fifteen, starting at fifteen. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Fifty-one. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. See, incorruptible. We're going to have incorruptible bodies. We're not going to be suffering the things that we have. All right? We're not going to get sick anymore. We're so not yeah. going to have cancer. We're not going to. Yeah, man. You know? We're not going to have, like, feet that get sore and stuff. Like, I have to shake around on my feet all the damn time because I don't stable my joints properly. Like, we're not going to have these stupid issues no more, man. We're going to be su we're gonna be superhumans. And that's a blessing for us, man, that we're going to live abundantly in righteousness, and just have strength and it's through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shine. Only through only through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Not through Amun Ra. Hell no, man. Not through anybody else. Okay? This is first Corinthians fifteen and verse fifty two again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in thy victory O That's death, Isaiah 25 and 8 yeah. O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to Yahweh which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach mm -hmm. therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord getting cold now this is um I'll read that, that 
last bit again. First Corinthians 15 and 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because Yahweh Shai, he truly, he conquered death. He conquered death. Wait, that talks about in the first, what's that? First Corinthians 15 and 26 or 24. 24. It said, First Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh, even the Father. Again, proving that even means indeed. It doesn't mean. I always make the, the comparison that you've got a small group of friends, maybe five or six, who you even invite Ted and Barry from the greater outside circle. You get me? Not only your close friends, but you'll even go to that extent of inviting him. It doesn't mean that I invited my close group of friends, even Barry, Ted, not that Barry and Ted, different one. Barry, Ted, John, so on and so forth. First Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Alright, so Yahweh shall he conquered death, man. So the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. When all, when and when which all is the things Father, go ahead. and when all things shall be subdued unto, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject. Subject. Go. So it says now just to clarify something, and then can you read the verse again, Mavakash? So there was subdue and subject in the Greek. I've forgotten the Greek word because Greek is weird, but it is a word, it's the exact same word, okay? So, yeah, Yahweh Shai is subject, okay? So, Yaha, anyone who believes the Trinity are going off. Yahweh Shai is subject to the Heavenly Father, alright? This is 1 Thessalonians, no, it's not. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. That Yahweh may be all in all. So when the son, the son has put all things subject to him, then he may have to have, then he may subject himself unto the one that put all things under him. That's a very, that is, it's quite confusing to say, but Lord willing, it's making sense. If you have that word there. Yeah. So, no way. Yeah, there is. Put it in the sheet here. Put it in the sheet here and repeat it. All right. So I, I can read actually. Uh, Strong Z fifty two ninety three. You pot tasso, you potasso. All right. Now that word means to arrange under. Okay. Arrange. You potasso. Say again. You potasso. Okay. Oh yeah. When yeah. it has that weird thing under the, at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, okay. So you potasso. Yeah, come, come. Yeah. Again, Greek is weird. <laughs> to arrange under, to subordinate. Okay. So to be un, to, to to make under. So even your house shy is under the father. All right. Like you have the idea of an ordinance or to ordinate, to set in order. Subordinate means you the order is under. Sub, right. Submarine means underwater. Right. Or subheading, that's just under the, the heading, main heading or, or yeah, the title the or something. Heading. Okay. And it says uh, to subject oneself to obey. So Yahweh Shai, he obeys the Heavenly Father. He doesn't obey himself, <laughs> right? You, you know, like. Because what did he say when he was praying? He said, Not my will, but thy will. Right, right. And what does he, what did he how did he it. teach us to pray? Right. He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That who? Thy my, will no, my be will done. be done. Thy will. Thy will. So even that he wasn't he wasn't saying for us to pray and say that Yahweh Shai's will get done, even though they are of one mind. And now he's ascended there out there. He's literally advocating our cause unto the Father in heaven. And you have to believe that that is taking place. Right. Is that something? Right, man. That is it, man. Whether you want to believe or not, again, you want to forgive and forget, the most I ain't done it, man. He ain't doing it. He's what did, what did he say? I thought about this. I was literally meditating on this about what to bring out. And didn't he say, did he tell us to forget what Amalek did? <laughs> nope. Give me what Exodus 17. Is it 17, 15? Yeah, it was the centurions. Yeah, man. That, and they would go the centurions. Exodus 17, 15 and Doris 16 or something like that. That also just reminds me of Sakana, bro. What? It's a 17, 15, they put it like under the sink or something like that. Right, this is the book of Exodus. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 15. It said, And Moses built an altar and called it Yahweh Nasai, for he said, Because Yahweh had sworn that Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So the Lord doesn't forget, well, the Lord can forgive, but he won't forget like that. 
Yeah. How can you forget? You're always gonna remember these things, you know? Like, the, the, what, what is gonna be terminated is this world, though. You know, it's gonna pass away. It's gonna be like, whoa, it's just gone. Like, all the stuff, all the things I don't... Like, no one in the kingdom of heaven is gonna remember all the times you've watched Nicki Minaj's music videos and like... Except you, what about Daniel 12 and 2? 12 and 2. Those, uh, those, the, the, the ones that wake up who aren't of the truth, they're gonna wake up into what they did, of course. That they'll have contempt of who they were, you know? Everlasting contempt. What the hell is that dog doing? That's just what dogs do, man. Oh, right. It's the book of St. John. Yeah, leave it. I think it's there. Yeah. Right, this is the book of St. John, chapter 14, and verse 26. Oh. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, oh. whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's remembrance, not forgive and forget. But all things that Yahushai taught, and Yahushai is the word. So Yahushai is that. What are they doing, man? Yahushai is that same word that it was prophesied that Yahweh Hashem Yahushai would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So it's not. It's not a forgiven or forget thing, man. And um, I believe there was something else to bring up. Oh look, sorry, someone coming up back Go on, go on. No, you're good. There's too many dogs out here, man. Whether it be actual dogs, <laughs> uh, I mean, not just to sl slip into the some more scriptures. If you just get Revelation 11 and 12, see again, this is the point. Focus on salvation, man. That's what matters. Okay, you don't don't ask like, do I, you know, like city, you know, like I don't know, man. Like simple things like when brother, um, or I should say, elder Manatizak. Uh, in, in the video he made regarding uh, it was titled Fringes of Death um, in his video regarding uh, Naquam, his camp he was in that video but I've heard this dude say that too many times you know, regarding uh, topics of fringes and wearing fringe t-shirts or brothers will, will get all carried away about your brothers teach against dreadlocks or some brothers will get all triggered even about things that they should already know like Luna Shabbat things like who Esau is there's all these nitpicky things and the truth is, is they're focusing on the finger and not the heavenly glory as the video the elder Pasari Amlab did that's got to be some of the isn't it? is it just a bug? to be honest that's me with a bug yeah, it's a lot for anyway well this is Revel- I don't know what you're saying I have completely thrown that's for Revelation thrown. 11 and 12 yeah 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 no I was going to do that do you have anything before that? Uh, no, no. Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And we already touched on what a, a cloud A cloud is. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Ignore, just ignore Jake, man. I'm t he's pretty, I can guarantee it's fucking nothing. All right, so the clouds are taking us up as the chariots, okay? The, the chariots are going to deliver us from when she, when she hits. If I get Revelation 15 too, real quick. Let's, let's start there. Two, yeah. yeah, yeah, start there again. And then we'll go back to Revelation 11, 2, uh, 12. Revelation 15 and 2. Right. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. What's that sea of glass? It's talking about the firmament of heaven. It said mingled with fire because guess what, man? Missiles coming to America. All right. Boom! And spark that place up, man. Go ahead. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then that had a, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Who was that? Image. The saints, the elect. Go ahead. And over his image, his doctrine, the philosophies, his whole system. Go ahead. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, okay. stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of Yahweh Hashem right. Yahweh that's, that's the elect right there, when we're up in the chariots, and we'll get Revelation 11 and 12 again, because the, the other nations and our people are going to see that, and they're going to, the shame, that's where the shame starts, man. That's what started that shame, and in the kingdom, they're going to know that's what, they, that's what they were like, that's what they were doing in there. That's going to bring everlasting contempt, man, about who they were. Okay. Right, Revelation 11 and 12 And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them Come up hither And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud And their enemies beheld them And we have a mirroring of that in Revelation 18 and 4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out of her my people That ye be not partakers of her sins And ye receive not of her plagues right. And that's not talking about spiritually right. coming out It's talking about spiritual physical deliverance This is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive, Salakia, then we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. So it's meant to be comforting. And what, why is that? Because it's prophesied that the comforter, which is the spirit, but also comes with a, uh, a document. Right? We have the document. We have this. This document has 100% truth, but there's also the interpretation again that comes along with it, and that's discerned by the spirit. And um, oh, that's a that's a, that's going to be a salvation that's going to be strange unto them. If you can get wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, yeah, that's for sure. This is just on comfort real quick. Uh, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Uh -huh. Now this is the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labours. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation strangeness so though. far beyond all that they looked for right you know so do your salvation hope for in vain in, in the mountains and hills they don't it's worthless when they do it they're hoping it for how how can they they don't know what's going on all right they don't know what's going on they don't know what's going on <laughs> all right I you think know they, i think you're saying with fireworks but they, is that if that's what they've done then that's ridiculous man wisdom of solomon five and two come on man you live in hood yeah. That's not the first time you've seen a firework or, so, or heard something that goes bang. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his ends to be without honor. Right. How is he numbered among among the children of Yahweh, and his lot is among the saints? Hey, I don't even have to break that down. That's I mean I, I will <laughs> because I love that scripture because we looked at it as absolutely insane man and we're hated upon. We look uh, people cussed us out recently got scuffed at which I thought was funny as hell. That's what they look at strange as hell and they're gonna be like how could he be how could that nigga be among the saints? How could he be delivered? How could God care about him? How Why not me? Pass? You know? <laughs> how could these people, um, how could these individuals who have ever so just been so, uh, so out of order, how could they be among the righteous being delivered? It's because the Most High, he does that. He takes the ones of the lowly, all right, the ones of a low estate, and he raises them up. He loves to do that, to show his power. And okay, and he, he showed that he, he has he has love and mercy to those that are of a low degree, not those of a high degree. So I'm paraphrasing the scripture. It says it's a light thing for the Lord to make a poor man rich, and in the kingdom, right. the, the whole nation is going to be rich beyond measure. You're never going to have to worry about paying the gas bill, putting this on, getting water, having enough money to do this. Um, what's, what's the term? Endeavor, or try to accomplish this accolade, and all them things that you you're not, not going to have to worry about it. Mainly because it's not going to be from a nation that is completely adversarial to you but because you, like you said we're going to be flexing in the glory and the glory in that is referring to the, the riches that in their glory shall you boast yourselves because that's their glory currently that's the thing that they um, magnify themselves in magnify themselves in their riches well it'll be, it'll be a time where Israelites will be flexing with the, with the um, glory that you've got it talks about in Isaiah 60 and 21 how the, all the all their glory, all their riches. So we've got, look, there's the, there's the Jake. There's the Jake. Spot the Jake. All right, Isaiah 16, Salakia, 16, 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nation, nations shall be utterly wasted. Come. And in the day, this is only going to go out to the elect, alright? It's going to go out everywhere, I should say, but in other words, it's going to go into the minds and they're going to, it's going to, the, the bellies of the elect is going to flow rivers of living water. The living water is these scriptures again, alright? And just, what cleanses us. just like the, the blood of Yahweh Hamashiach, that perfect sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice, 
is actually on the whole nation of Israel but it's only going to be profitable for the elect on this side it's a similar to the hand that's why it's like a sweet saver no matter what whether you get destroyed it's necessary it's still going to, it's still going to be a, a, a sweet saver that, you know what I'm saying unto death or unto you know, everlasting life you All can't right. love, your, love your life and you, you, Love not, love not your life unto death, man. Love not your life unto death. You're not supposed to. See, and you're not. What kind of folly is this, man? These, these are these are the the adversarial forces. In in you don't you don't need a heathen and literal non-Israelite to be an adversary unto you, man. In the way it's set up, man. Jake is is well. First, he's starting with his flesh. We are worst wor own worst enemies. But even after that, man. Even after that, we still have an evil eye toward our brethren, our sister, on down. Go ahead. This is John chapter 12 and verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. See that? And uh, the elect say, in fact, another scripture on that, real quick. Revelation. Um, that's the 12. <laughs> Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. You and you. <laughs> they loved not their lives unto their death, man. You know that that means they strive for the truth unto death, like it says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 28. In strive fact, it says the truth, strive for the truth unto death, death, and the Lord shall fight, fight for thee. thee. Right? The Lord, if the Lord's on your side, who can go against you? Nobody, man. No, not they none. can try. <laughs> They, they can try and the trying will be such a joke as well. Man. And that's a, that's the thing, man. A lot, <laughs> a lot know the prophecy, but you're still going to try and fight against Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the chariots of the Lord. How bugged out do you have to be at that point to go, nah, I know everything in history has come to pass because, you know, there's, there's a certain level of the rulership that do understand that. But nah, no, nah, no, nah, we can definitely um, overcome this one. We can definitely overcome. Well, no, the ones that are called, chosen, faithful will overcome you by the blood of the Lamb. Right. And that, right. That means you need. I mean, this this thing, thing, this thing of ours, is the carnal aspects of it. They're not really necessary, you know. Like, you know, those, you know, I speak to be safe and sound. I'm talking about Jakes in America here, so you know, don't start getting on me, whoever the hell, you know, YouTube, whatever. All right. So, the Jakes in America who go to the gun range because they can legally go there, but they're practicing for something that's not going to work. Look, what what can that do when shit? And why, is listen, man, why would you put that online? Yeah, 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 for sure, man. You know, and you know who you are. I just, I just. I just don't know, I forgot his name, I'm, like, I don't even know if that was even his name, but you know, he used to put pictures up a lot, and talk about it a lot, and talk about going off the grid, going to a desert. Brother, that's you're not how this works, man. You're posting about it. First, there's no way you can run from Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai's judgment, indignation, destruction. But secondly, you're, you're posting all your, your, um, what's Cogit cogitate, well, not only that, your cogitations of how you're going to deliver yourself, that you're going to go off the grid, online. That's the, see, Jay has no, this, <laughs> Jake has no man I'll leave it there <laughs> has no. We have no That yeah, goes man. for us as well We have none We have nothing in this place But at least we have the wisdom Of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai can. But it can get taken from you What did David say? He prays that the Holy Spirit Was not taken from him And that should always keep you In a spirit of humility In a spirit of lowliness Because it's not Again it's not only Not of yourself can. You can get taken out This any day man can. And that You're not be... needed You're not necessary Right, the Lord, you need the Lord, the Lord doesn't need you. You can't get yourself into um, treating the Lord like a side bitch, quote unquote. I believe that was from Elder Manasseh Zakbar. And it's not to be disrespectful in terms of trying to phrase that, but it is how you frame the whole dynamic that now I'm going to go, I'm going to go about my worldly, worldly success. I said worldly, over your worldly success or your, your worldly studies, endeavors. I love that word today. But so on and so forth. This, this should be, like I once said earlier, this should be your main thing. Though. Serving the Lord, that's why we're put on this planet to serve the Lord. This is uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve Yahweh and Mammon or Mammonas in the Greek, which basically means your riches, your wealth, your substance that you gain. Is the, all right, because that, that's you know, the love of the money is the rule of all evil and stuff. And that's the, the idols built. And no, it's not a contradiction. It's because you serve it. You're serving as your God. You know, you're worshipping uh, your riches that you got from it, whether it be strictly very specific worldly things that are no, made you, that you, you need, enjoy. You need cash in in this place. Like Yahweh Shai said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, Caesar's and unto Yahweh what is Yahweh's. But then you don't worship that. You don't go, go into the inscription and go, oh my, 
Oh my, all of this. <laughs> God save the queen. <laughs> all that bullshit. <laughs> He's trying to get his head chopped off for treason. This is me. This is my uh, Psalm 15. Why is this not called the divided queendom as well? But anyway, go ahead. This is uh, Psalm 51. And um, I, go, I go to verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And you should incorporate that in your prayers. If you ever feel, you know, you're down, you feel, you feel sad. And even when you feel, feel up, man. Wicked. Even when you feel up. So lucky to cut you off. No, even you when you feel up. up. When you feel, um, when you, what is it? Prosperity, adversity. It all comes from the Lord. That's Syrac 11 and 14. So however you feel, especially when you're like that, you're more inclined to. But even when you're on top, you feel like you could do it without the Lord. Which is never you should, you should, what you should feel like. When you feel like, oh yeah, I've, I've got this, man. I don't need to be. You should. We should humble down and remember who even put you in the, the place for you to feel so exalted. And we, you, can all, you can all slip, but you, you don't want to be in that spirit. Man. You said all things. Right? Sorry. <laughs> cool. Alright, let's skip through to... Let's just pull out a random scripture. Alright, this is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 3. It said, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the power of Yahshua, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. So we, and we can we can apply that to the kingdom, in terms of amend what you're you're, you're trying to do, and you will dwell with Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, because being in Him in His secret place, that dwelling, that's the greatest dwelling. Okay, that understanding in this place, even if you went to the land, is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. So the be best place you can be to hide yourself from the indignation is in this truth. You got anything? I was thinking of. Oh no, it's yeah, come on. In fact, perfect, perfect. So you get, I love that's the that's, It's always blessed when the, the lesson kind of goes full circle a little bit too. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 15. Yea, truth faileth. And why is that? Because in this world the truth is not being brought forth and manifested. Unrighteous decrees are being made forth. You know? Well, there's not been righteous judgments on earth. People have got away with stuff. They don't make account for the for the things, like it says in the there's in the song, I believe, verse five. I'll read it again, Isaiah 59 and 15. <clears throat> Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. That's why we have to be wise as serpents, okay? You know, you can't um, you gotta be careful in how you distribute, you know, your teachings, everything amongst everyone. What's that? Matthew seven and six. Uh Matthew seven and six. Uh -huh. Matthew 7, 6. Mm -hmm. And it also talks about beware of men in Matthew 10. So they, they that's, might... that's the good one. Matthew, yeah. Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Right. Neither cash ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So if, let, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Okay. You don't have to force on Jake. It's only for the elect. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I read again though, Isaiah 59 and 15. It says, Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Alright, so look, the Most High is furious, man. It doesn't matter what Jake wants to say, forgive and forget spirit. That don't mean nothing, man. What, did right. it, what does it say? The Lord loveth judgment. Yeah, he, but again, right, right. when Yahushua was getting on the Pharisees in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, he said, you've, admit, you've omitted certain weightier matters, two of them being judgment and mercy. And when they're put in, um, in perfect conjoinment, or um, when they're, what, I think, good, get me a good word, man. Huh? Coming together. Harmony. Harmony, not the one. I want to, I want to start with con. Con. Oh, uh, con. Con. Uh, when they're oh, not just connected. I've got something that came go on, through. Go on. Uh, convention. Agreement. Nah, man, I'm looking for I'm it. I'm throwing these I words out. Brother Mashal don't like my words today. I need, no, you've got it, man. The next one will be it, Lord willing. And when they're in co conjunction. Conjunction. When they're in perfect conjunction, they work to balance each other, man. Give it, giving a just weight, not, not a false balance. For that is what unto the Lord? Abomination. Abomination, man. Alright, so this is 2 Ezra chapter 5. If you had anything, Salaki. No worries, man. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 1. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the days shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be, shall be barren of faith. And as the brother was saying, it's perfect when it comes full circle. So he's like, you can't just stumble into a secret, into a mystery. Alright, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai chooses. Like it says, John 6 and 44, No man can cometh unto Yahweh Shai, unless the Father which sent him 
draw this man, this individual, man, woman, child, unto Yahweh Shai. You see, the Heavenly Father is doing all this. It's all Him. He, it's, he's the power. If He's the ultimate power, then how can it not be through His His decrees, His, his, his desire? His Spirit has gathered them. Right. Says. His Spirit fills the whole earth with everything. See? Go, go, go. Too many see? See? <laughs> see? <laughs> Living waters, man, flowing. All right. And um, and that's all of the Lord as well. Wind, anytime, anytime. anytime. Go on, go, 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 go. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. It's picking up now. It's picking up now. Finishing up the Spirit. All right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 verse 1 For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things All things Right In all things man Incorruptible spirit and Meaning that when evils happen You know it's of Yahweh And Shall Yahweh uh, So evil happen in the city, city And the Lord <laughs> has not done it Of course he has Okay And that's, that's Hey that's That's um Um It's not exactly bits of truth man in a, in a degree It's not exactly pleasant to know that evils have to happen But they do have to happen You know and the truth is, it is righteous. Again, the Lord loves judgment. So evil, the word for evil, right, it goes into wicked sin, but it also goes into troubles, okay? When you send trouble on someone, he's going to look at you as evil, but you could be doing it righteously, right? Because Esau is going to be like, oh, this is so wrong, right? But the truth is, this is righteous, man. This whole thing is just. Elder Manat is that why we keep mentioning him. He made some beautiful lessons, that's why. Go on. But he made a great lesson on, um, it's like some, I don't know, not stoic, but like some Buddhist philosophy. It's like someone came along and he went, yo, you, your daughters have a child, isn't that good? He went, maybe. He went, yo, all, you, all your daughters just got killed, man, isn't that good? Isn't that, so like, isn't that bad? He went, maybe. And then he said, oh, you got a donkey, isn't that great? He said, maybe. And he was like, oh, your donkey's got a disease, what, isn't that bad? And he was like, maybe. And that's how you have to take it, but it comes with maturity. It comes with spiritual maturity. As, as you grow in this thing, you realize that you have to stop reacting so carnally to spiritual things. Facts. Like if you if you get cut in front of in a queue, you go oh man, oh it's not like the Most High wasn't yeah. wasn't involved in that re in that action. I can't like a, a lot of things. I'm trying to become more patient because yeah. I got one. It's like you know, just like the other day I was walking and this is outside my fucking house, man. You know these uh, these alleged Edomites, which I'm pretty certain are, man. But you know they 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 was um, trying to just talk. You know one of them just looking at me. So I just look at him. I said he knows at me. I nod at him. We keep walking. One of the other dudes with him. I was all like, what are you looking at, mate? So I'm like, man, I'm not saying nothing, but I'm like, bro, are you stupid? Like, this little last kid could have got stumped on. What if I was crazy, man? What if I was crazy, Jake? All right? What if I was that bug out nigga who just suplexes people when they talk shit? All right, I was walking, the, and he's, he's talking about Alu Akbar. Yeah, I'm not Muslim, by the way, you dumbass. So they, they're talking, they're scoffing, they're talking shit while I'm walking away. But it's like, you know, back in the days, if I was being carnal, I'll be honest, man, I would have stumped the shit out of that guy, man, talking shit. I would have made him choke on his teeth, but guess what? I ain't gonna do that right now because revenge, vengeance, it belongs to Yahweh, man. And that could have been a Jake, and you could be an Edomite. Hey, plot twist, plot twist. <laughs> I well could be an Edomite, <laughs> and he agreed. <laughs> but it's true, man. It is true. And we, we had that conversation with the brother, and he he he, he got it. Lord willing, he got it, man. The fact that you can, if I took, I would use it. Well, if I took an Edomite wife, stereotypical looking like, and then my son did the same, my son did the same. What's it gonna look like? Of course, you're gonna have you're gonna have an inkling. Of um, knowing, but there's certain people that I found out were so-called Jakes, allegedly, or their their fathers went back to a dark-skinned man from the Caribbean or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was I was confounded by it, man. It made it made me like, even though I should I should be hyper aware of that, being of that, but at the same time you can fall into it. It's very easy to, but you you have to fight it just like you can fall into a carnal altercation. Can. But you, you you have to you have to. In terms of quenching the, the worldly spirit, you have to quench that. But the Holy Spirit, you have to let it prevail, man. Because the fruit of the Spirit is, is a great thing to possess. And um, in, in all situations, um, being patient is never going to hinder you. God. And guess what, man? If you're patient now, if you're the elect, when it's all said and done, <laughs> sayonara Esau, man. And none, none of this stuff is going to be big time vengeance. Again, we, we can't say enough. The vengeance of Yahweh is not to be taken lightly, man. Okay? And he, he, uh, that's why he said he, he had to put uh, um, the spirit on, the, on, the, on that set of individuals, the elect, to do according to his anger. His anger, even man. doing it into personal anger, it wouldn't be enough. And it's not like we're just going to do it out of flesh. It's going to have to be Yahushai coming back, redeeming his elect, and that's when Yahushai will come and rule the whole and reign over the whole earth in righteousness, man. It's not a wicked doctrine. It's not quote unquote hateful. It's a, as it says in uh, what's that Amos five? It says hate the evil and love the good, mm -hmm. and that's that's what we're supposed to do. But even in that, it tells you to lo love your enemies. You know, Yahweh Shai tells you to love your enemies, and this it's, it's all it's all about balance, man. It's really all about balance, and you, you, you get closer to it, 
with maturity. Am I there? No, hell no. Really hell no. But we're working on it. So this is Amos chapter 3 and verse... You can barely see, Salakia. Amos chapter 3 and verse... Six. six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and Yahweh has not done it? Verse 7. Surely power Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets see again the secrets unto his servants okay who are the Israelites okay again you're not going to stumble across it he reveals it unto you because he owns this place okay this is all his man he made it for our sakes okay and he's revealed it to his elect in, on this side and his servants are the prophets okay but of course they don't our, our people of course don't don't see it that way in fact they'll be they'll actually scoff at the idea that we even say in fact can you get second chronicles chapter 36 and verse 16 because our people do that, man. They scoff. They scoff and they mock at us, man. That's why it's that's why you can't really put a lot of energy on. It's like he said, like that kid could have been a Jake. But you know, I don't believe he was. Only because of that area. I just I don't know much. I don't know, test his spirit. But it's quite likely he's an Edomite, so let's just say he is. And if that, 60, 2 Chronicles 36, 16. Um, so but at the end of the day, we can't focus the energy on him, okay? Because we've already got a battle with our own people. We're trying to get them right. And they're already on our irritating hell of us and mocking us, and, you know, which is scoffing. Go ahead. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16. But they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his words. See, they despise this truth, man. When we come out there, they mock and they, they, they hate to know anything to do with the Lord. That's going to bring them everlasting contempt in the kingdom of heaven, all right? And, and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people right till there was no remedy there's no remedy right there's nothing you can take nothing you can uh, help to quench and soothe that the judgment coming nothing man when it, if you're not of the elect you're in trouble man you're in for a big time big time judgment and um again he reveals it unto his servants okay therefore the israelite that's the secret man the secret place is these scriptures man it's not it's not everyone's going to be able to understand it it's like when you walk around you got it sometimes i do that I, you know i walk around I'm just looking at everybody as I'm walking and I'm just like, wow, I'm like, I've got this sword right here. This is not literal sword, don't worry. I've got this I'll spiritual two-edged sword. In court. Yeah, that will, yeah. Spiritual, spiritual uh, two-edged sword right here. And um, I, um, wow. um, I, uh, I walk, I walk uh, amongst the different nations and I'll be like, uh, damn, you know, it's like, it's just weird. You kind of, I'm just kind of struggling. I don't know how to explain it. It's just that if you really do understand it, man, we're in like a secret little hiding spot, you know. Yeah. We see the wicked, we foresee it, and we hide ourselves from it. You have to give all praises to you. How about Hashem Yahweh Shai? Hashem Rakhat Kodash. You got a scripture? Okay, I can, I can barely read it, man. I'm yeah, honest, I was. I'm feeling aged in the eye. Okay, I'll just, I'll read a few. We'll close that, right? So, again, you know, the main thing to remember is that the Lord is gonna preserve His elect from. Uh, from from the set perils. There'll be times when we get tried, okay? There's gonna be shit's gonna hit the fan for us too, okay? And you know what? Your family will turn on you a lot too if they're not really willing to, man. Right. John 16 2 is a great one, you know? And John 16 1 is important. Don't be offended of that, okay? You can't be offended in this, man. Who are you? Matthew 11 and 7, I think. Yeah, Matthew 11 and 6. Blessed is right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Blessed is he who shall, whose servant shall not be offended in me. Coming into a time, man, you're gonna be tried. Were you, were you just a, a, a giggly Israelite on the side, just because it looked like the, it's a phase mom? Are you serious about your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai? It's gonna be made. It doesn't say everything that should seek be revealed, and it's revealed by fire. With, and that's gonna be that. That's gonna be um, your, your works are gonna be revealed, basically. That's what it's going into. Okay. As a, as a as a furnace. Right. As gold tried in the fire. Right. Acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Come. And acceptable, acceptable men, low willing, we're of the men that actually do uh, go through that trial. But we make it strong and we can see each other in the kingdom with tears of happiness and joy. I'll and we'll actually right. finally look black. <laughs> 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 this is Isaiah chapter 59. Oh man, my eyes. Hold up. That's Let me see if I can. I'm, you know what? This will be the last scriptures and I'll be out. This is going to be a mission. If you can get Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. So that'd be a good one to and 14. And 14. Can't. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness is sustained him. Again, stretching forth his arm to protect. And, you know, you should pray to the Most High, but, you know, say, 
uh, to stretch forth thine hand to protect me and not to destroy me. And it says, for he, this is verse 17, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate. What does that remind you of? It reminds you of Ephesians 6. Can't? Ephesians 6? Uh, 6 and 12. It goes in, uh, <laughs> right? He put on, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garment of vengeance for clothing and was uh, clad with with, see, uh, with zeal or passion as a cloak. The passion also goes into suffering and pain. Yeah. You know? Pathos in the Greek. Can't Tawada. So again, a garment as well, vengeance, right? For clothing. So you, and it says, so you're covering what you cover yourself. Are you covering your shame? What are you doing with, you know? I read off my phone. Um, Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Tawada. Tawada's a good one. Uh, verse 18 according to their deeds accordingly he will repay again the deed right fury to his adversary adversaries recompense to his enemies it's a righteous thing to get recompense okay uh, to the islands he will repay recompense so shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun you know Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14 says the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh shall be filled uh, over the whole earth as the waters cover the seas okay mm. then it says uh, when the en uh, sorry, we are, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against them. Because the enemy is going to come all right, with vengeance upon upon uh, us as a people, okay? And, and the crow said, Khan. Yeah. So had to agree <laughs> yeah. The crow, yeah, man. Let me tell you something. When, when, when Esau's out, the, the crows are going to love it. All, right? all the animals, they're going to they're gonna rejoice Especially too. Especially the vultures. Bruh. It, oh it's, man. It's, it's going to be. It's got, nah, yeah, I got a script. You want to tell me about it again? Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. Perfect. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And with that, I pray it was edifying unto the next one, Lord willing. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rochacha, Shalom, Shalom.